Well, hey, 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 who's ready to play a new game that I like to call? Let's figure out which of these tracks on my local playlist that I haven't actually tried out on stream before are actually going to uh, possibly trip any copyright ID robots. I'm very excited to play the game, just like I am very excited to play certain other games, but I guess I have to prioritize to engage all of that in its turn. But yes, hello everyone. Who may be receiving this message at this time, or perhaps a later time, that Phantom of a Possibility is also always present, I suppose, in a technical sense. Oh well. I say, oh wow, very uh, <laughs> subtly under my breath, because I just tried to click on a thing that I have clicked on many times before, and for some reason it seemed like it was going to uh, take a lot longer to come up than it usually does, and apparently it is. <clears throat> oh well. I suppose it is inconsequential, though. And that it is currently about a minute earlier than the time that it could be, if it were a minute later than it, than it is now. Which would have the potential to be pretty awkward or so, but as it happens it was not. However, in the approximately 30 seconds it will be that other minute that I have just referenced, uh, which will very likely lead me to actually do something with this thing that I have just uh, opened up on the side here. Well, on that note, I should probably just go ahead and switch over to this, this scene. And I guess I'll also do this with at least a little bit of anticipation. And maybe even fade this out for a little while. As I await for... Well, I await a certain signal, which I don't think I'm going to be able to hear, but I should nonetheless be able to get some kind of a visual on. And just a moment to switch over to, I suppose, one of the two conventions, which is not necessarily the one that I could have started with right now, but... Which I pretty much made into one of the two possible possibilities that I can do at the start of the stream, if not doing them both together, which is also a possibility, but I mean, in the interest of certain things, I might just limit it to one today. Let me see if the thing that I was anticipating just became available here. And why not? I'll go there. Go ahead and fade this out real quick. As I try to make this... Uh, visible slash audible. I guess we'll start with audible. Yeah, that should definitely be audible. And unlike the very first thing that I couldn't hear, which I apparently would have gotten by the look that I had at the metadata for it on the normal room on this side, which I'm about to make visible here. Here we go. Apparently that would have been an excerpt from You Will Know Our Names from Cinema Blade 1, which I'm pretty sure I could have gotten. This, on the other hand, I have no idea, and... Duel of Summoners in Maggie Nagi Train Car Game, well, obviously. How could anyone have missed that, possibly? But it's also a bit too late down the it having actually played line to use a hint or anything. Perhaps this will be different, though. Hmm. Could be some kind of 007 game, I'm guessing it's not Goldeneye. Yeah, I'm guessing it's something to that effect. Oh, okay, it's that. I just want to like try to start naming off some 007 games that I would know exist. I think Goldeneye, the... Well, the Goldeneye that everyone knows, but it remains pretty much the only game of that franchise that exists that I have actually played at any point, even though I still have never beaten it or even gotten very far into it. But hey, that's uh, very much within the pile of maybe that will change at some point in the future, on stream even, but I mean, the pace that I tend to work through things. Can't say anything with any more certainty than that. Oh. I would say that's kind of a crappy hint, but... 
By sheer coincidence, I am familiar with that analogy. That extremely coincidental bit of knowledge, which I would say is very much not Vox Populi, not necessarily something that should be considered expectable by the average person, but I don't know. Speaking of games, I don't, uh, I don't think I even have any lists of mine, but I have like a personal interest in Center Gears and Center Saga. I might do those on stream at some point. Uh, here's a game that's <laughs> something that I probably should play on here at some point, but I don't even know what to do with after uh, playing this game very, very briefly. And then just kind of getting lost. Hey, I got our two to five songs already. I have not. I might actually end up skipping that today since I ended up starting late and I want to probably have as much time as possible to get through the game today. Oh, look at that. Bad luck is the giant mutant. I guess it has the same kind of melody cadence as a T Rex track, which is what I thought that was. Yes, on the other hand, I have no idea. Preemptively, I assume that I'm gonna need a hand for this. Let's confirm that. Could be some kind of sort of obscure um, rose skin stains. I have no idea what that is, predictably enough. I was gonna say some kind of obscure Danny B, but I get the feeling that's not it at all. That's pretty much the only thing that came to mind when I heard that. There's apparently someone called Saki. Okay. Something tells me that this is one of those uh, very low area or reference area weave stuff that you would see on this side a lot. Hmm. This be one of those hill tracks that I don't remember at all, despite having actually played all four of those games, because that's clearly all that there is on stream. I do feel like I probably should be able to remember at least a little bit more from the soundtrack from actually playing those games, but I suppose that's also a testament to my complete... I guess I'll use this, since you can't use any of it. No, you can use these during uh, the actual quest, but you can't uh, can't use that one, so not really much a point. But we're not using that, not like it'll persist anyway, but you know. That was apparently a CP secret laboratory. Alrighty then. Thanks, Fragic. Fragic. I can't believe that they have whatever the hell um, rose gun stays is, and also a CP secret laboratory, but they actually rejected my bloodstained uh, theme of tobacco submission. That tells me a few things about what I can expect out of this. <laughs> I've said that in the past. With what melody can you fix broken signs in the legend of Fuck. Time? Isn't something like that enough? Oh wait, not great enough time. Thought it was um, Spirit Tracks. I think you can do the same thing in that game, but with a different song. I don't know why my mind immediately went to Spirit Tracks instead of a green of time, but I also wouldn't put it past the type of questions that come up in this quiz. Of which game Gear Game is Shining Force HD a port? <laughs> Okay, apparently it's not that simple. Running for scale, of course. In which country does the event of Resident Evil 4 take place? Sure. No, aren't you supposed to be able to see, like, this, 4501 versus what? Supposedly 4501, sure. <laughs> Whatever you say.
who is the first playable character in the DS version of Super Mario 64. Okay. And supposedly I somehow entered slow enough there to not even get a hair. Okay then. It's one of those questions I just kind of wait until the last moment to give you like the most important information. From what game does this image come from? I have no idea. It's probably some. Cat, yep, no idea, Katana Zero? Oh, it's that game that's like... In the... sounds like Hotline Miami and Fury and Sayonara Wild Hearts and whatever the fuck else. That sounds like that pile that I've never actually seen. Or played. I guess that's what it looks like, though. What game has Sumo Digital made and published in 2017? What is Sumo Digital? When we start there. Uh... Okay, I have never heard the word sumo digital in conjunction with Snake Pass. Until today. Which animal represents Pirandello Kruger's image? Come on. What is Piku called by the townspeople in the mountain village at the beginning of Piku Niku? What the fuck? Ghostly something? Ghastly Beast of Legend. I have never played that one and I can't say I feel particularly compelled to just because this site has any more of it. From which game does this wow. come from? Well, time to start guessing. Uh. Okay. Of course they would do something like that. It figures. Which mascot from the same series does the treasure that Ruti brings to Walt refer to in Tales of Destiny? What? <laughs> sure. Another thing I don't think I've ever heard of in any context. Tell us a Mew. Mew. Which message appears on screen when the player gets a sun in Super Mario Sunshine? Of course. Shine, but not shine yet. Pretty sure they should at least accept that, even if it technically, yeah, it's bizarre that they don't accept that. Which French studio released the SNES game Time Cup? Surely not. That's the only one that came to mind, though. Uh, fuck. Okay. Not a name that comes to mind from my superficial knowledge of French studios, which would mostly be associated with adventure games. What is the name of this character? <laughs> I don't know. What's the Latin word for owl? Of course.
What saying the character almost became a playable fighter in Project M. I have no idea. Project M. Oh, Sonic was already there. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. At least I got something. Which basketball video game, released by Midway, is considered the ancestor of... Of course. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is there a game called Double Dribble or am I just... yeah. I am Mandela affecting myself with a... The name of an old Ritz Prey video. I have no idea what this could be though, yeah, I've never heard of that. How did the G-Virus spread in the city in Resident Evil 2? can't even remember if they kept that in the remake. I feel like they... Like, reveal the equivalent scene for that scene a lot later in the remake than they did in the original. It wasn't even the G-Virus, though. It was the T-Virus. Oh well. From which game does Fuck. this image come from? Yep, I have no idea. Let's see. Street... Carts... Racer... Of course. Which rhythm game makes the player play as a space speed? Oh, okay then. Guess I'll take that. Another game that keeps getting referenced in passing even though I've never played it, even though I'm pretty sure that I have owned that one for a while. Because it had like... When I first saw its description and like the story, it caught my eye a little bit. But I still haven't touched it, even though I've owned it for a while. What trace is Abe from the Onward series? The funny part is that I only... I never actually played the quote-unquote classic games in Oddworld. I only played Munch's Odyssey and... Uh, and Stranger's Wrath. Which, to be fair, I still believe Stranger's Wrath is the best one. And I probably want to play it on here at some point, but... I should probably at least try out the older ones at, uh, at some point before I die. Who is the final boss in Metroid? Samus Returns. Cool pre-shoot. From which game does this image come from? See above. What is the name of Phantasmagoria's female? Fuck. It's yeah, obviously not that, but that's the first thing that came to mind. God damn it. I literally own this on Vertigo. I can't remember what it is because I've never actually played through it. Adrian, there you go. I should probably try that soon. I mean, I literally extracted all the. Uh, all this stuff from the actual physical disc that I have so I could play it on Scum VM, but I haven't actually tried it. What is the specific item to Peach and Daisy in Mario Kart? Double Dash. Fuck, I don't know. I think I've played these games. Oh, 
What the fuck do hearts even do in Mario Kart? I don't think I've ever seen a heart in Mario Kart. Yeah. In Mario Kart. Not sure. What is the protagonist's job in Kamizone and the Genesis? Yeah. Another guess. I don't think I've had very many guesses. Very many guesses that actually paid off today, though. And of course, we have all the fucking French stuff first. I can't wait to. What's the actual event on here at. Uh, probably not even this year. Where does this image come from? Fuck, okay, I don't know. Stray boy. Stray boy. Something, something. Other. I don't know. Monster boy and the cursed kingdom. Of course. But yeah, I can't wait to host uh, an actual event on this site. Probably not even this year, so I can have a. Answer is not even in French or English at the top. The name of the main character in Wonder Boy and Monster <laughs> World on Sega Genesis. No. Sanon. Simon. Shion. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Whatever you say. To which element are the Metroids weak in their, in their larva state? Another example. What MMO developed by Peter Molyneux in Studio 22 cans consists of destroying thousands of small cubes to discover the big cube's secret? <laughs> cube eats... Probably cube is something, but hell, I know what can... Curiosity, what's inside the cube? Okay, well, never mind. I don't think they've ever actually made a Fable MMO either, though. From which series this game comes from? So we can at least know by osmosis, because I'm pretty sure that Mike had some stream music from this series. Not because I've ever actually played this myself. Which one of the following games did not have a platinum release? Fucking hell, I guess this one? No? What even counts as a platinum release? This seems like a very flimsily positive question. I'd like to see some sources for this. Oh boy. Time to miss a couple of these strikes and then probably start playing video games, methinks, today. Probably a good idea. And yep. Probably say something about how fitting it is to have something like freaking trails in the sky after that, but I don't even know. If I necessarily want to. Maybe have something different for the next one here. Well, I have no idea what this is, but it's probably not trails, at least. Could it be something that I am going to heavily dislike regardless? Let's see. Okay, maybe not. Based on this. 
classic Mario Party. It can actually be from yeah, one of the few Mario Parties that I've actually owned, and in spite of that, it basically doesn't stick out in my mind at all. I mean, that's pretty much the story of my life. There are very few... You know, in spite of my interest in VGM, I feel like there's very few VGM OSTs that actually did stick out to me from playing the game. Not quite the same as... I don't know, that... Uh, what was it called? Mario Party on the Game Boy Advance, which was pretty much made with the complete assumption that you were not going to be able to do that in multiplayer, so pretty much everything in that game was designed with that in mind. Not quite to that extent, but I feel like the DS1 had something at least a little bit similar. Uh, let's see, though. What I shall do next will be go ahead and update the metadata here. And probably just bleh. go ahead and try to, to breathe a little bit, see if I can actually enunciate anything today. See if I can actually play video games today. I feel like there was something else that I wanted to at least mention in passing before I move on to the next thing here. Oh yeah, okay, I was gonna say it completely dropped out of my mind, but I momentarily remembered it, and it was the fact that for some bizarre contrivance of fate, it does kind of look like I have quality options today. That's uh, definitely a rarity. But there they are. But yeah, now that I have gone ahead and established that in a couple of different visible ways, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get straight into things so that I can get as much time out of... This is possible because, as I believe I may have intimated, I'm probably gonna see if I can finish this no later than... At least try to finish this game, at least no later than uh, early October, ideally. Let's see if I press this button. Okay. I'd like to rebind my... The hotkey that I use for this and uh, that I also use to do the pushy talk thing on Discord, which is... And uh, one of the side buttons that's on my mouse that I'm using right now, which I'm pretty sure that would be the, I guess, go forward key on, for example, a web browser, but for that very reason, it doesn't really do anything most of the time, so it's like the perfect extra button to use for background, <laughs> background stuff like this. I know how to pronounce things, hold on. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate that I have to find this out now since I'm going to be starting the game, but i go ahead and uh, rewind that a little bit and maybe... I have the possibility of bringing that back for the start of the stream, since I'm pretty sure that was its debut on it actually coming up on my playlist here since I added it not that long ago. It's very it's really not a very long playlist. Oh yeah, speaking of that. Did end up sending off the uh, top one hundred chase thing finally last night. I wonder how that's uh, actually gonna be used, because I really have no idea if any of the the conspiracy theories that have been posited for that we're actually going to have any weight behind them at this point. And also there's like red stuff at the bottom of the screen here on my Discord, which, don't you know, it turned out to be pretty unimportant stuff. As it typically is, if I can just get rid of it right away. Uh, better have that out of the way, but yeah, we're going to be returning to the oldie grade Ace Attorney. Chronically, just a second here after I readjust the position of these windows as usual. There we go. And just go load right back into the place that I was in before, which should be right at the start of a uh, yep. Twisted Karma and his last bell. At the start of chapter 4, doesn't even make me go through the actual chapter selection screen this time. And I mean, why would you? Not do that in order anyway. Pipe in hand, Sholmes looked down at the thick, rolling fog outside our window. I wonder exactly how many mysteries are out there, hidden within this bed of fog, he said. Indeed, a most bizarre incident, born of a curious advertisement. 
A hellhound's mad gallop through the shadows of a serial murder. An executed man's graveyard resurrection in the dead of night. And a commonplace killing in a small, forgotten room at the edge of town. There is, naturally, always another side to every case of which most remain ignorant. And it is that other side which compels me to the scene of the crime, Wilson. So quickly now, take your hat and let's be on our way, my dear fellow. For our adventure is not over yet. Come, the game is afoot. You know, I want to say that the game is a foot is one of those catchphrases that uh, it has that reputation of not actually ever having been said as it was, kind of like uh, Elementary, My Dear Watson, but I feel like that one at least might have been. Can't say that I could tell you off the top which story specifically it would have come from, but uh, let's see. But yeah, previously, at the end of the previous case, I had a bit of a wham episode with... The masked dude who um, works with Event Seeks, revealing himself to be Kasuma, who was still alive and just had like amnesia. Which was very, very amply foreshadowed though, like pretty much from the beginning, from the scene where we first saw that guy. And also, the professor was his father, who we don't know anything about. Like we're still lacking a lot of details in that regard, so I wonder what we're gonna find out now. Although we were in the foyer of one of the London's most luxurious hotels, the Great Waterloo Hotel. Wonder if that could relate to anything. In particular, apparently Mikotoba is coming over here instead of the other way around. Since what happened, I think you're gonna have to be a bit more specific than that. What about Kazumasama's father? There is that. It's very unclear why his father would have actually done any of that stuff. Could be some kind of a situation, kind of like with Joe Dark in Rise from the Ashes, maybe. But it's uh, actually more complex. It's also not very clear why the Justice Minister guy wanted him, uh, him being fucking the amnesiac Kazuma, to actually serve under Van Sikso. I feel like we still need an explanation for that. Also, just why so, so many of these different things are being so tightly kept as, like, highly secretive stuff. Or just highly secret stuff, not really secretive, I guess the people involved are being secretive about it. One of these things fits this adjective, but not all of them. Okay. Okay, there they are, together. In completely different clothes than we've seen them than we've seen them in the past. Katawa even looking like kind of different Asian Watson, I guess. Even though we seen we've seen the real Watson, I guess, quote unquote for Wilson in this universe, and he didn't quite look exactly like that. And this guy. I mean, this guy's clearly the judge from the Japanese courts. That beard. It's not showing his, yeah, his name right now for some reason. Sishiro. Wasn't his other name? I can't remember which one's his first name and which one's his last name, but one of them was for fucking Jiyoku, wasn't it? Which just means hell in Japanese. that we could recognize the other guy immediately, but not this guy, who has way more distinguishing facial features, I would say. 
or at least features that are on his face. It's been a long time, even though I went to that trial too. Two poses a man, some time back. I mean, were they? Were the two of them in London together ten years prior? I thought it would have been longer than that, based on how they were talking about the backstory up until now. The older man who's 16 years ago... Yeah, apparently 16 years ago is when... I guess three Japanese people came and must have been these two and then the professor. We still haven't heard his actual name. Ministerial status. Ishiro here is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs and he also acts as an actual court judge. And we didn't know about any of this. This is eight days after the end of the previous case. That tragedy which I guess we've scarcely heard any additional details about in the meantime. Wonder how that has gone. Well before you tell me about it, how about I show you my my armament? This is my obligation. Nothing useful to say about that really. So I guess no, they're just gonna give you like generic responses no matter what. I could also look around the background of the room here. And actually be able to examine it at this point, wouldn't you know it? Exhibition, which is probably one of the biggest temporal... How do I even phrase that? Uh, discrepancy indicators in this whole setting, but... That's 300 meters tall, a dead canal in Paris, so... How does it draw properly? This one could get stuck, surely, well, who knows. I mean, she's literally just talking about the Eiffel Tower, and I just, uh, I just flew over my head, that's probably it. I mean, the Great Exhibition of 1851 would probably be out of... also be, uh... Incongruent with the Eiffel Tower, let me look into this briefly, because that's like one detail that I haven't actually looked into for this purpose, let me see. Blah blah blah, construction, blah blah blah, work on the foundation started on 20th January 1887, so yeah, that didn't even start until more than 35 years after the actual Red Exhibition, so there you go. More interesting stuff that doesn't actually match up with the timeline, even if it's completely fiction. Ooh. Actually, looked or skipped over that unintentionally. Just hand clear thing. I guess I'm looking at something in the background that I can probably apply in just a moment here. Let's see. Yeah. Probably electric light bulbs that are actually frying light, yeah. But, I mean, probably gonna have the objective of looking luxurious if it's in a hotel lobby like this, but... Not too most of that glamour is probably coming from actual lights, but just gonna try to figure out how to, uh, whatchamacallit. <laughs> like what the um, optional objective is gonna be for this chapter, it's going to be... It's going to involve an incident with Toby, according to the description, so I guess I'll wait for that. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, that is true even today, and it's even worse off because of fucking... If you look at the prices for pretty much everything in Greater London today, it pretty much inflated as a result of the Olympics and that it never really went back down, so... So that's a fun time. I think there's not really that much, that many different hotspots to get descriptions from this area though, so might as well just finish that off. Trying to catch any challengers, I might be tempted in. Oh, wouldn't you know, the porter who wasn't actually the person who was visible in the background or in the static background art is also one of the. Uh, one of the. What's it called? The jurors from a previous case. I'm pretty sure that he actually showed up in the first court case from part one, though, or the first British court case from part one. And I think he said that he was like the director of the Guild of Coachmen at that time, unless he's just literally supposed to look exactly the same, but not be the same character, which I don't even know. Maybe we'll even get to talk to him some more, but well, let's actually have this conversation now. It's been long enough that I put that off entirely. Wasn't that about 16 years ago? France is beautiful capital, Paris. Does that mean that you came from the southern part of the... I guess that would probably make more sense, because it would probably be like harsher sailing conditions on the north coast. Did the Swiss Canal already exist at this point? I don't remember. I guess that's another thing that I need to look into. Hold on. Precursors, blah 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 blah. History, blah 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 blah. Preparations, construction was apparently between 1859 and 1869, so not quite as much of a discrepancy as other things, but probably still something worth taking note of. Yesterday evening we left a part of Dunkirk for Dover. Oh gee, that was quick. Apparently they planned this down to arrive just in time if it's uh, the schedule's gotta be that tight. That seems like a bit of a coincidence to me, but... I'm close friends with a professor of forensic science at a major hospital, and now he's dead. And now I kind of look like him when I dress like this. Anyway. I mean, I guess he's also dead, but still. There's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, but it still doesn't bring him back, so... When he says the Professor of Forensic Science at a major hospital, he's talking about Kazuma's father, even though I thought he was talking about Watson. Hmm. Or Wilson, or whatever. Now let's hear more about him, I guess. The Professor, whose first name we still haven't heard. Even as part of that revelation scene. So can we hear more about that? Genshin Asugi. <laughs> Boy, well, that's a timely name revelation. I came to Britain as a police detective. Yeah, we haven't really heard anything about who he was as a person so far. I understood what drove the man to commit such heinous acts, so they don't know either, presumably. His motivation would have been. But it probably was some kind of a surprise, at any rate. It was a close trial, so the public never knew the truth. And no one knows what really happened, but it's still like... Even people like them, who presumably say that they don't know what happened, are still gonna... Encourage treating this whole thing as an affair that should be kept secret, or at least the details of. I was told his father passed from sickness. However, I suspect he may have had his doubts. One day he came to my office and said... I want to travel to Great Britain and study there. So I guess he didn't know about the... Did he know about the fact that... Or did he not know about the fact that his father was the murderer in this case, except... Uh, like, until 
I think they said it was eight days before this, that big revelation happened. But they're still not gonna come out and say that that was the only reason that he wanted to come here, which I thought was more or less a safe assumption after that scene, but... Maybe it's gonna come out that there's even more to it than that. They didn't know about that. The fact that for some reason the other guy, the British Justice Minister, apparently forced that guy to work as Van Sieg's apprentice. Or at least recommended him, but I mean, he's pretty much just ordered it. Mysteriously vanished. But he's still alive, so... The fact that he was still alive was kept secret from literally everyone, even these people. It's very interesting. And yeah, he was suffering from amnesia, but it's not very clear how much... Misha, you were suffering from it's weird phrase like that, but it's not clear like what he knew or didn't know. And regained his memory eight days ago. And if we don't get to interrogate that guy, I suppose these two are gonna try to. And they pretty much say that one of them at least is pretty much his friend. I wonder what's gonna come out of that, but I guess we'll find out later. It was Yujin, Genshin Yasuke, and myself, the original three. The only three Japanese people to ever show up here, in an official capacity. Well, I mean, there's pretty much literally what he just said, so I guess we must assume that's the case. Ocean voyages, voyages are not what they are today, a whole 16 years later. Massive generational gap. Sandwich between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Hmm. Sandwich between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Would that mean that, um... Between London Hospital, sandwich between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Wouldn't that mean that it was the same place that he was, um... At least the burial ground was the same place where he was buried and he came out of the grave. Now what we're going to do with bodies following out autopsy work. Autopsy labs have something of an unavoidable relationship with graveyards and prisons. A Scottish prison governor, Caden, his name was. I don't think we've heard of this character now. Everything changed with that dreadful case. Genshin was arrested for a series of the most gruesome murders, which we claim to still not know why he did it. As a witness at the secret hearing, so he saw it, but he's still not gonna tell us more about that. You went a little too far and ended up chase facing charges yourself. Well, I'm pretty sure that this all means that yes, there is more stuff that they could tell us, but they just don't want to. Also the whole business with the Hand of the Basket of Ghosts that was also alluded to in the intro cuts into this that we still don't know the whole story for. 
Werd er mij door was de most joyous event of my life, but was accompanied by the most tragic event of my life too. So is this like a different thing that we technically haven't heard of yet? So then that essentially offered me the opportunity to study here in Great Britain, so I just ran away from home to do that. It's also the reason why I now feel compelled to give my daughter as many opportunities as I dare. Well, the world does not really afford young women such things, I must say. Machine around your neck, it's a camera. It's five shillings for a lovely photograph to commemorate a wonderful sting at this hotel. Well, I guess he doesn't actually get that response very often. And there you go. All that artwork. Ask something, and I guess you just completely ended up forgetting about that. Instead of actually saying, hey, wait a moment longer, I just want you to uh, let me ask this question. I mean, shall we go now? Shall we go back to Baker Street, or shall we go back to the office? I believe we visited this place for some time. We could also go back to Baker Street to the two rooms in that. What happens if we go here first? It seem, this seems like the place that we would have the least to do in if, in fact, there is anything, but that's true enough. We don't even have any uh, introduction dialogue. You know what to do thing? Might as well just look at it. Japanese across the ocean to London. All this immigration volume. What will ever happen next? And look, it's gonna be another discussion about spades and shovels. Can't possibly neglect any of the arguments about this, though. Let's give the implement a name like Professor Herbie named his tools. Let's call it Funoski, really. Possibly just think of a name that didn't involve either of them, just so they could avoid having yet another circular argument. I definitely we won't really be learning anything new by examining the rest of this background stuff, but I might as well at least take a look. I mean, if they're in the ocean, the anemones are probably eaten away at, at least, by something else. Maybe there are certain temperatures or depth levels where they just don't do as well. I don't think I heard that detail before. And look at that. It doesn't look like this thing is going to have its eye filled up anytime soon. Filled in. That will be. Oh, she's not gonna tell. Don't you know it? I mean, maybe at the end of this part, 
part two is when it'll happen, since that's pretty much just the end of the whole story. We literally just took a new photograph, but I guess not with Sholmes and Iris. Covered with papers. Yeah. You know, I have my own desk just cluttered up with a lot of different things, but surprisingly small percentage of them are papers. I feel like most of the papers are on the uh, off to the side area at this point. Take a look at this. Sumi Ink and a calligraphy brush. Even though we're in England now. Dude, we still never get a description for those, uh, like, hanging onions or garlic or whatever they are. They're just kind of conspicuously there, and silently there. Forever. Ain't he just like a story that I was reading today as a part of a... Sort of build up to a thing that I have to write up. Wherein someone became susceptible to being attacked by a demon because he drank a lot of green tea. That was like the twist at the end. I mean, the story is literally called Green Tea and it doesn't make sense until the end. Tears of joy from my mouth. Well, there you go. On our due diligence, we can also do due diligence by presenting the armor again, even though I get the feeling that well, this might be a little bit uh, different than before. Simply dropped it into the Thames yesterday, and now it rather smells. So. I think I said that a little bit different before, like, I would bring up how it was in need of being mended, but. Pretty much where the conversation would end, and where she would get mad. I guess it's different. And hey, I guess they're keeping the Kazuma's mask in the, on the little table there. And also, where is someone saying this? Could that be some kind of a man screaming in a most unflattering way? An approximation to what the German kid was, the way the German kid was crying before. Perhaps. Oh boy. Look at all their hurts, bright red. The pain from that story that pretty much has it in the name. It must be client to Mr. Sholmes. Even though he only had one client in the actual story, the Red Hand League, and the character that's supposed to look like that character died at the end of Case 5 of Part 1. Or not at the end, but like he was just a victim in that case. But I guess we're bringing it back again. We're going back to prison. John H. Wilson. The dead man that they still haven't... That's supposed to be her father, I'm pretty sure, they said, but they still haven't told her about the fact that he's dead. 
actually waited this long and also he did that. Not actually just coming out and saying it. Well, we keep talking about the obvious, but before we do that, maybe we can talk about a different obvious thing. But before we do that, why don't we take a look at some of the other background stuff that I may or may not have to also keep track of? What does this one say now? Not a little stick figures all lined up, cheap apples at the market is what all of them say. I think that we already had that, uh, yeah, that particular blurb, which is the Dancing Man reference, but... Mysterious Pun's name, Mysterious Little Box, a Mysterious Horseshoe, a Mysterious Biscuit. That last one might just be one of viruses and fetish snacks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that sounds familiar. What about the typewriter itself? Is there anything? That's gonna be added to uh, like any new description that's gonna come out now. Probably not. Well, other than those two things, and I guess the model piece, I don't think the model piece is probably gonna have anything new in it either, though, as far as the description. Tatsu, don't stick your legs in the fire. And that's probably it, really. I think there would be anything on this side that would, uh, that I would fish for new descriptions from. There's the mask, which is like the most obvious thing. It looks a little bit like the Overseer masks from Dishonored, but we already know that it doesn't cover the whole face. Yes, I know, NVIDIA. Not right now, please. You don't give it back to him? I thought that it had broken or something, but I guess it makes sense that it didn't. So he's not gonna wear it anymore. I guess that's all we have to say about that right now, though. How about this newspaper that I don't think is usually here? It says... that a red-headed league... So they pretty much just immediately name drop that story too. Clearly this has something to do with that lightly hair. That very conspicuously artificial and gaudy addition, but I guess we can also... I mean, what happens if we just... Let me try to do the presentation thing first, just for the sake of uh, being thorough. First time you've shown me this particular trinket? No, definitely not, but... There we go again. I could be sure it was not the first time, yeah. I guess that is technically a new description. I feel it's less deduction and more uh, pattern recognition, reminiscence. Your two visitors, the greatest problem, and the lie you told, and apparently none of these things are related to the... Uh, you know the obvious with his hair. So before we actually take a look at what the rest of that conversation has, let's see here. On account of the bequest of the late Ezekiah, Ezekiah Hopkins of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, USA, there is now another vacancy open which entitles a member of the league to a salary of four pounds a week for purely nominal services. All red-headed men who are in sound, who are sound in body and mind and above the age of 21 years are eligible. Apply in person on the morning of the 31st at the large park in Lime Street. Get four pounds per week if you're a redhead. Hmm. I need to confirm a couple of details uh, in light of this showing up. Let me see. There's two editions. I guess I'm gonna grab this one. On 
Callan, blah blah blah, Ishikai Hopkins, blah blah blah. All retired men, blah blah blah, of the age of 21 years are eligible. Blind person. On Monday at 11 o'clock to... Okay, so it doesn't say in this in this game's version of the advertisement, it doesn't say the name of the person you should apply to. Probably because that would be a bit of an eyebrow-raising thing, given that Duncan Ross already gave his name to a different character that was involved in a previous case in this, and that didn't actually turn out to be a villain, so... Doesn't, also doesn't mention Seven Popes Court Fleet Street, so... It's apparently Lime Street instead. They just didn't want to mention a real street in this version. Let's just see. Public health reports. Cholera. Endemic under horizon epidemic. Outbreak. St. Bartholomew's Hospital, which is where Watson. Uh, at some um, practice and employment. The area of miasma is being soundly rejected as experiment after experiment has yielded. Conclusive. Evidence. In support of what physician John Snow had concluded many years prior that there is a strong correlation between contaminated water and the prevalence of certain diseases. In fact, the latest news derived from the continent, blah blah blah, germ theory, minuscule microorganisms, blah blah blah, tender creatures, blah blah blah, okay. And also health services. And I can't really see what the rest of this is retrospective about something continued from page 7. Adam Smith's Magnum Opus, The Wealth of Nations, was published in 1776. The doctrine of laissez faire has only begun to truly take root. In the last few decades, it remains to be seen just how influential and enduring his ideas, his ideas will probably be. Well, I think you know how that ended. Uh, from our own experience, so. Let's see what the actual conversation here was. Oh, shoot, shoot, hold on. I don't know what happened there, but apparently it was like stuck and lost forward for a second, even though I wasn't actually pressing anything. Two gentlemen, pedial criminals. All minor of infractions. Or the target of a crime. How can we hear about uh, the details of that? Could have had an arresting tea party. Perhaps in a few different senses. But no answer was forthcoming. A bungler, that's a word. Well. All those redheads had been up to no good. And could it be related to, you know, the this universe's version of the Red Hood League advertisement. And the greatest of problems known to man, which I guess I must have said very much in passing since I didn't quite process that at the time. You're aware of the theory of evolution by natural selection, will ya? I mean, I'm sure Darwin had been active for at least some amount of time by the time, by the earliest possible moment in this timeline, and absolutely he had to have been by the latest possible moment in this timeline, which is where a lot of problems arise, but anyway. It was newly proposed 40 years ago now. Okay, that could, that's yet another thing to add to the anachronism hodgepodge. Apparently, the theory of evolution was uh, proposed by Charles Darwin 40 years before this point in the timeline. 40 years before the Great Exhibition took place. Humans were once apes who lived in the treetops. And from the very moment those apes descended from the canopy to live as humans, has been our lot to be at the mercy of the greatest problem known to man. The problem of rent. I guess he was getting paid for that. Didn't seem like he was paying, getting paid a lot at a time though. One put an error for Iris and a new motor car for me later, and all of it has quite disappeared, I assure you will. I mean. I'm 
which is a substantial clue. Before your very eyes, okay, so this version of events is literally gonna be the one to try to do the swindling thing. That's a red headed league advertisement. Don't look but observe me very closely. There is one particular feature about my person that has changed. I wonder what it could be. Can be the uh, very quaint clothing that I'm wearing right now. Pay no mind to that whatsoever. I think you've probably gotten used to it by now. So I guess we're just being pressed to present that if you want to talk about that in more detail. What about this lie? Somewhere we can go, you said to us. Detectives are want to lie. Do we want to like talk in more detail about the lie of Kazuma being dead? A case of all the SS Burya in January. Kazuma wasn't killed. You know he wasn't dead at the time. So what what's really going on? Do we get to learn that ourselves? Side effect of the prolonged comatose state was amnesia, as you now know. It was a simple enough task to silence the crew. But how, and I think we would say more importantly why. And why was all that kept under wraps? Living unconscious and having unlaid from the ship in Hong Kong as a murdered corpse. For some reason. This is right to find some material with which to pursue the crew and to keep their word, of course. So, but yeah, why do it in the first place? Oh, I skipped that part. <laughs> we'll be at liberty to elaborate in due course, but for the time being, I mean, there's not a whole lot of time left, considering that there's two cases left in this ten case set, and we still have a lot of questions. I didn't foresee subsequent events. Him being ceased and then showing up later in Britain. Okay, is that true? We're gonna leave that thread of conversation though. Well, let's hear about this. To the Red Headed League. Could it be related to your bright red hair? Last you've learned to apply my methods of just pointing out what's blindingly obvious. Gain or post? So, I guess that technically unlocks the final conversation topic here. Does he know the whole story behind the Red-Headed League yet? I mean, he's already had, like, the whole... The whole actual explanation behind what the Red-Headed League was in the canon. Nobody came in Case 5 of Part 1, like I said. It's just like a fraud thing, so that... To get somebody out of a pawn shop, so that... Uh, his assistant could dig under it and tunnel through to a bank vault, but... Because that already came up in the past, it's probably not gonna be what turns out to be the... Raison d'etre of this thing. According to the advertisement, the Red Haired League is a distinguished institution of fellows of unspecified governance. The only condition for becoming a member is having red hair. Isn't about the lucky redheads receive once they join? An unconditional salary of four pounds a week. I mean, in the story, they, it was just like a front to keep the one person that they actually quote unquote employed in the, um, like, out of his own shop for hours at a time, so they had him copy the encyclopedia. Put in my application at once, so we lie just on the off chance, but, you know. 
she doesn't have red hair, so that's very much a non sequitur. I mean, she barely even has red hair, she has more pink hair. Which I guess we must assume to somehow be natural, but I mean, you know, how to move. I only have a fixed number of members, so only one certain number of people have joined, no one else can. As luck would have it, one member recently passed away. Hooray. I mean, look at me. No one will ever question this. It looks perfectly natural. It doesn't look questionable at all. It did have to go so wrong. Well, a blunder. Well, let's hear about the blunder, I guess. What did you actually do to your hair? Oh. I just see on top of my head is neither dyed nor hairpiece. Oh, really? Change the color of my hair overnight by the wonders of chemistry, so... I did something that didn't involve dye, and yet you used chemistry. I stumbled upon a potion that, when taken, turns one's hair a flame-like red, really. I really won't see how that makes sense, but... It's quite safe to drink. That's not a denial. 24 pounds per week, one must be prepared to turn a blind eye to a little danger. Oh. Yeah. The whole park was chunked with red-headed folk, like Coaster's Orange Barrel. Is that what he said? A coster's orange barrow. I'm not even sure exactly what that's supposed to mean. In particular, a cute for eight hours solid before at last I reached the front. But when a panel of interviewers saw me, they immediately said, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, are you in disguise to conduct an investigation? Well, I mean, technically speaking. He probably could have said no. So naturally I had no choice but to reply. Don't keep me away. Well, after which I could do a little else but turn and leave. Oh, well. I turn that pair into the police. What? To where they actually... Were the pair that were here earlier? Were they the ones that were actually conducting the interview? It's not very clear exactly what they had been doing, if that's not the case. They were petty villains. I guess I'm expecting it's a client. A young gentlewoman who wishes to appoint the services of this great detective, no less. Have you in my clutches now, Rent? It isn't due for another hour yet, so... Surely you need to leave right now and go visit the Justice Minister to see what he has to say. I guess that's pretty much our prompt. It's not very clear exactly how much time it would actually take to travel between the uh, between the Baker Street apartments and this place, but well, here we are, British Supreme Court. Final draft of the opening address for tomorrow's proceedings. Stature and direct dress make you all but invisible to me. Well, that's very forward. Even though he's not wearing dress and he's not wearing a black in this timeline where he's wearing the. To be fair, not that much more ostentatious, but the blue suit that's his custom outfit. It's dressed in white from head to toe whenever you come here, just like Kazuma, technically. That's pretty much taken to. In recent years. Peter's 
sweat covering the way down your face seem to suggest otherwise, so... The International Forensic Science Symposium begins tomorrow, so it would seem that all these important characters are gonna apparently be moving. Operations for the meeting room with the van seeks. I guess we're forced to assume that it must have something to do with the same event, unless it somehow doesn't. The dedicated right hand of many years was recently put out of action in a spectacular fashion, being a uh, Courtney Scythe. Don't think we ever actually saw her show up. I think we. I don't remember if we saw her show up in this room before. As part of the case 3 proceedings, but. Dr. Sainz and Grong do precipitate the situation. And also just being blackmailed over something that was pretty sensitive. And apparently now Van Six has taken some of her duties. Disturbingly, his apprentice has been missing since yesterday, but only yesterday, even though I guess he must have been around all the days prior. What's he up to now? Also, would you like to take a look at my armband? Evidence in question being quite dull. Well, an attempt was made. Let's just get straight into it, I guess. Oh, two million, yeah. I mean, that's... I feel like that's not even as many people as actually showed up to... <coughs> to the Great Exhibition in real life when it happened in 1851, but... Oh shit, I just realized I've been muted for quite a while. Didn't even realize. It. I wonder how long I've been muted for, but I didn't sure that that wasn't. I'm pretty sure you didn't miss anything important. Anyway. Wait, did he just say, referring to Kazuma, that. Okay, that you and here, old friends, so. Maybe he's actually gonna be willing to say something about the top. Eh, the topic. 
unidentified Asian man was apprehended by border police. Where? How? A large goods vessel. He started a way to get here, so he had no papers, so he was like suffering from post coma amnesia in Hong Kong, and then he disappeared from Hong Kong, and then he showed up here with no papers and by himself. But then why the mask? That too. You couldn't tell that he was Asian, of course. Yeah, would it be so much easier to explain why he had to wear a mask? That is a good point. I guess that's just gonna be dropped now. I believe he's left London for the time being. The man's father was one of our country's most infamous criminal, yeah. Even though it still feels like we have a lot that we need to hear regarding that guy's case. A professor case ten years ago caused a great stir here in Britain. Using a ferocious dog as a murder weapon. Wait, really? I don't think we heard that at that particular time either. Like maybe mentioned in passing at some point in the past during case three, but I didn't remember that detail. So he was the Hundo the Baskervilles murderer. No one would have believed that the culprit was a foreign student invited here to study by the government. Nobody in your country knows it was him, and neither do the citizens of London. Well, except for a couple who were actual close witnesses, and us now too. It has to be noted that there were some supporters of the professor's apparent cause, which has not come up at all. The majority of the man's victims were a blight on the aristocracy of the day. Somewhat ironically, their deaths actually benefited society as a whole. Well, but apparently one of them was Van Sieg's older brother. Or so a fair few fingers in London believed anyway. Maybe he also had something to do with the Reaper, the whole Reaper business. It's still not a... yeah, similar to the idea of the Reaper of the Bailey. Still don't know the whole story behind the... whether or not there's any truth to that and what it means. But I guess that's all we have to say right now. Do you want to hear about this... this red-headed league affair? That's probably a no. I think there's also not really a big new to, uh, you know, the game behind uh, or from explaining or examining this stuff. What a grand desk. And if you suddenly find yourself in the toilet you have so far to go, but also, yeah. I mean, if that were the case, you'd probably. I have enough anticipation from feeling it coming, but... Look at that clock. We could install one in the office, and an enormous wheel turned by an enormous steam engine. Or a simple fireplace. Well, I mean, the fireplace could be part of that, surely. Said guard snakes shrines in Japan. Hmm. It's a great point to keep two cats one day. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it would be that hard even at this point in history. Peddlers of books are forever pushing their words on him, you see, that's an interesting way to spell that word. I think he's just too kind-hearted to refuse them. They saw him coming, well... Sign of kind-heartedness. Well, maybe not two peddlers of books like the type that would actually approach you. 
You know, it occurs to me that for all the books that I myself own, I feel like only a small percentage of them actually came from that kind of uh, experience. I feel like the only one that really comes to mind uh, right off the bat that I can just say that I got from an actual book peddler would be my copy of Slaughterhouse-Five. Which I, you know, funnily enough is also a book that I haven't actually read yet. Oh boy. Do we get to meet a new client now? Oh, hey, it's literally some one of the jurors from the previous case. To upset me. What? I mean, what did he say right before that? I must be willing to accept any case, no matter how unstimulating. Save locating a runaway, of course. Oh, he did say that, but why did he say that? A gentlewoman... Well, sure, I've seen her somewhere before very recently, well, yeah. You've also, I guess not nearly as recently, but you've also seen the porter from the hotel before. Apparently she's actually given, being given a name right now, though. Evie Vigil. Like, ever vigilant? And she's coming with a case of a runaway husband. Missing husband, so... It's probably a handful of canonical Holmes cases that I would be referring to. Let's see how this develops. Trust you will remember your words also. Well, okay, what did I blink to this time? What is no object, simply name your figure. So he's just gonna bring that up again later. Gentlemen and lady would be, well, you see. These are my friends. You may say before this pair anything which you may say to me, which I'm pretty sure is something that he might have said once or twice in the stories so, when it came to Watson. Can vouch for a gentleman personally, after all. He's hard of hearing. Well. I mean, that's one way to turn gain someone's confidence. How about, uh, do you want to hear about this article? It wasn't even what I meant to show him, just meant to show the armor again, but... Well, now we get to know she's gonna have the same response if we should try to show her this. Yeah, it looks like what she is. Well, we tried. Let me take a quick look to see if any of the background stuff is updated, but it doesn't look like it has, so... How about we take a look at the big metal chest? Only the other day I saw Mr. Sholmes kick it. I seem to mistreat the furniture, though. Well, at least it looks like it's very much sturdy enough. Okay, let's let's talk. Mrs. Vigil and Mr. Vigil. Have we met somewhere before quite recently, perhaps? <laughs> Literally the first thing they're gonna mention. A nice young lawyer from the trial I attended last week, yeah. You said that my client was guilty at one point, along with everybody else that was there, but... She's just rolling with the hard-of-hearing thing. 
It was frippery, really, nothing more. Sit quietly in the corner, but also it's fine for you to continue to conduct this interrogation. So what is the deal with her husband's daily vigil? <laughs> like, daily, not spelled like that, vigil. He's 40 years of age. It looks like this. He has the same kind of face as Duncan Ross did a couple of cases ago, but... An entirely unremarkable gentleman by appearance, at least. 15 years marriage this year. They seem like they're probably... Young enough that they must have been married pretty young. I only look at you to know these things, well... I mean, there is some truth to that. But this is the latest style, your hat clearly regularly groomed and your eyes are animated. In short, you have no inkling as to why your husband might have disappeared, correct? He's a kind man with a strong sense of loyalty and he rather dotes on me. It would point to the possibility that he has become embroiled in some incident or other. Hmm. Husband's employment is somewhat unusual, you see. But if it incurred some miscreant's ill will? Well, what is his line of work? He's a warder at prison. Hmm. That is somewhat unusual. I suppose. By relative standards. In actual fact, is a chief order. Does the prison have a name? And yeah, that would be a specialist occupation. Capital punishments, yeah. He's remunerated more handsomely than the other orders. All those plebeians. But nobody ever talks about that in the neighborhood. And that prison would be Barclay Prison. Is that the same prison that Selden was in, I wonder? There's a large cemetery just behind it, and would that also happen to be the same prison that, uh, like, the forensic students from Japan? Hold on, what did she say? Lowgate Cemetery, yeah. That the forensic students were studying in, and that the, uh, the professor was apparently Emerging from the grave in. Suppose it must be if it's gonna be this surprising. When did you realize he was missing? was yesterday, well... I mean, it should probably be recent if you're gonna be... You know, seeking help in a private matter, you would probably try to do so... Rather quickly after the fact. If I say private, I meant, like, serious or urgent, but... Probably just said private, because I don't like to think about the things that I say, apparently. not to make any contact for a whole day. That's certainly never happened before. Hasty. See no reason why he should not engage my detective powers to track your husband on anyway, so he's not convinced that he's even necessarily required to get involved, but he wants that money. Seek only to put the sweet rent in your landlady's purse, that's all there is to it. We'd have to go through into his purse first. I 
In a day or two, I shall be contacting you with a hardening report, I'm quite sure. There's nothing that stands out about him, but I guess that's why we're gonna need this picture more. A day or two, are you sure? No, I mean, we. I suppose one thing that we know for sure is that we can't say what will happen in at least that period of time. Yeah, I'm sure, of course, but then I didn't swear on it. And there's Rob. I hope to be able to give her some good news, one might say. Even if it will likely take a lot longer. After all, the rent must be paid by the end of day tomorrow, so. Surely by that time we'll be able to extort something. to learn where her husband worked at the prison, you know. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily uh, true that everything that's around this one locale might be connected, but... It does seem like that's where this is going regardless. Where the professor was incarcerated and apparently fake executed before he was executed for real after he got out of his grave. Or something. No water from the prison has mysteriously disappeared. And it also have been a place where Selden was uh, being kept. That's, you know, yet another reason. Or yet another uh, detail that's ostensibly linked to the whole uh, Baskerville's case. Possibly be seen out with this hair. Well, even though it's not clear whether that hair is even going to be reversible, based on what he said before, that was quite a different matter, bro. Quite a different matter because I expected to at least get some money out of that. Prisoners on the outskirts of London, backing onto a lonely burial ground. Oh gee, this is nice. Can I remember the last time a civilian was doing here? And of course, this guy also has like a phonetic Scottish thing going on. And you didn't want to talk to an inmate, but to me. who I am. I'm the governor of Barry Caden. Barry Caden. Well, I think that they also mentioned his name, the, uh, the Japanese people that we were talking to in the first scene, in this case, mentioned his name. And an Easterner, I see, so yeah, he probably would remember them as well. Did you say Japan? There's no idea of your kind in here, laddie. Well, Suspicious looking Easterners, I mean, ostensibly the, you know, Japanese mass murderer would have been tried and, well, kept and executed in this prison, and apparently buried behind the prison, so... He's probably got some bad memories of that. And I guess they've, yeah, they've cottoned on to that as well. Apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. You're sniffing around about that case, aren't you? Well, 
Your agents, eh? Part of the professor's great web, no doubt, so... But really trying to make some kind of... Some kind of actual analogy between this, like the professor in this game, and Moriarty, even though... The professor in this game was Japanese. I don't wonder what the deal is with that. I mean, I would assume that there's gonna be some kind of other character in the end that's somehow gonna be turned out, gonna turn out to be behind everything secretly, and that's gonna be the actual Moriarty analogy, but who even knows who that might be at this point. I'm not sure that name came up in conversation recently. Caden, oh. Does that mean that he's not actually gonna tell us anything right now and we have to go talk to the people at the hotel first? Yeah, just didn't even want to bring up any topics. Let's just get out. Can we examine stuff? No, <laughs> can't even do that. Can we present anything? Oh, we can at least try. I get a feeling that pretty much everything will have the same results. Even the face of this guy, who presumably would have worked at this prison. Yeah. So this is gonna be completely fruitless right now. So I guess we go to the hotel and we're probably gonna be finding, you know, these characters here. Oh, he's just sitting right there. At least him. Is the other guy gonna be in the other side of the hall? No. Just him hanging out in the in the lounge, I guess. Not less of a lounge and more of a lobby, but you know, functionally, I feel like they fulfill a similar purpose as shown here. He's not the relaxing sort. He's taking himself off to pay his respects to all the legal bigwigs. Only prison governor at Berkeley Prison. Busy drinking coffee in a comfortable setting. Well, clearly all of these things. I mean, did he say that out loud or? Yeah, no, it didn't. Look at the watch are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts, or so it would seem. Could it be that you, Narahonos, are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts? Can't look at it either way. Here's a letter of introduction. He wouldn't have been thrilled with Japanese people in general, but apparently he is going to shut up his team to references provided by this one Japanese person. Hey, <laughs> check it out. Can we actually examine that? How if you say that's wonderful handwriting, sure. This dark suited man, young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. I don't think that matches the uh, the writing on that actual graphic at all. Is there anything on the back? Oh yes, a little bit. So it's probably gonna somehow turn out to be important later. This is some sort of steamship tickets. The SS Grouse, first class cabin, the low one. Yokohama departure 11 September, London arrival 1st November. So that's almost two months, so. Cold and Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. Just see, not to keep a ticket as a memento of your trip, well. Do you like this on purpose, huh? And yeah, I guess that's somehow gonna turn out to be important after all. I'm gonna take a look at the little ripped section of it though. Because that must not be important, but hey, check it out. K 
can I pull the wool over my eyes? You good for enough in Japanese student. But also Mikotoba. So I'm gonna be able to remember that name specifically. That young jock from the forensics laboratory. That Mikotoba. Yeah, well, as you can imagine, he clearly must not have changed at all in the last 16 years. Jinx. Can I forget to try one of these wee handcuff biscuits? Well, uh, can I possibly refuse? And yes, that <laughs> really taken pains to just underline that, point that out, but that whole situation could in fact have been avoided by having an earlier introduction or mentioning of what her name was. One of your orders has gone missing, was part apparently was like a pretty important character in this prison, and yet he doesn't immediately know what, uh, what that's about. Haven't you heard nothing of the sort? There's no missing persons in my prison. Well, I means we can literally show him a photo. Mr. Daily Vigil. So I guess we didn't have to show him the photo after all. Well, hold on, before we do that, how about we probably take a look at the background here, now that we have a chance. An axe, a hunting rifle, and four pairs of handcuffs. There's a story behind every one of those. If it was a famous killer's murder weapon, the axe was built by an infamous executioner. Well... Jimmy. Axe was the one I used to chop down the cherry tree at my house. <laughs> and the cops on the left are the ones I caught my first burglar with back when I was a bobby. Alright, well, I mean, at least one of those was probably, probably had some excitement behind it. How about this bird? Is it a real bird? <laughs> Hard not to see the poor creature as a prisoner, especially considering how you know how small the cage seems relative to its size. Let me out to kill me. Well, has the bird learned to mimic the plaintive cries of the inmates in the cell? So, that's one of three siblings. You see, he still calls suit the names of his two brothers like that all the time. So. Then you and then I kill me where it's two brothers. Not quite um Not quite a Breve Koshpai and Shenyu trio, but Watch your dinner, eh? Didn't I do it? I feel like well perhaps it's kinda has a similar ring to what I just referenced, but made a different language. That deer has been staring me for a while now. Staring at me for a while now. Can't fit through this small hole in the wall, but it can't get its head back out again. Now, okay, so it's just a gag about him not being dead. For a moment, I thought it was another assassin sneaking in with the other ventilator. Well, perhaps you need to reread the adventures of Herlock Holmes, or perhaps you can just play Resident Evil 1 again. Inmate register. We're just gonna look over all that without this guy getting in your way. Whether or not they left alive after serving their term. All the details about the crimes they committed are recorded in there, like an epitaph, you might say. Record of crimes and punishments. And not even a single Raskolnikov in sight. Enjoying tea and biscuits as he talks about it. How about this desk in the foreground? I guess that's not important. How about these pictures up here? Maybe they will be important. Proper 
governor's former inmates as well. Especially the one on the extreme right. His expression goes beyond severe into a whole new territory. That wants me. This is a prerequisite of the job, perhaps. Well, I mean, there's probably a... Probably a consequence, if nothing else. Of course, it's not, although it's taken into consideration. Which I suppose oughtn't be surprising. Nothing on the window, nothing on the left side, well, we've been avoiding it this whole time, but... Grandfather Clock is also a guillotine. You might have heard of it, you know, probably about, uh, Somewhere between 60 and 100 years ago. Probably would have been used to chop people's heads off, just like the professor might have chopped people's heads off that were noblemen. It can chop carrots and parsnips and so forth. I mean, you could probably also lose a hand if you stuck it in there, if that's uh, totally capable of doing that. If you place a large card at the bottom there in the morn by evening, it'll be, have been cut clean too. Okay, well, maybe not if it takes that long to chop one of them. They must have, have, an, must have an almost indescribable edge on it then. It's probably all of it. Well, now will he have any kind of comment to make about the Armand? You have to wear something like that to prove who you are. Perhaps I should wear these handcuffs. Well, he's got like these weird uh, lapel pins on his back and on his actual lapel. They're supposed to be like prison bars, but they look to me more like, I don't know, the kind of uh, grill that you would put over, like, a knight's helmet or something. So what happened to this guy? Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. He was a fine warrior. He doesn't uh, work here no more, he left the job. There's a question. When was it a boot? Can it been, have been much less than 10 years ago now? Oh, really? Stopped working here 10 years ago. And apparently he must have lied to his wife about still being employed at the prison, so maybe... You know, I mentioned a while ago that I was trying to figure out if this was going to be like an analogy to a specific home story, and I thought of maybe uh, like case of identity or missing three quarter for like spouses that were missing, or maybe Lady Frances Carfax, or even though I don't think that one was about a spy, a uh, spouse. But uh, in light of this, it might be more like something more along the lines of man with a twisted lip. I don't know. I think she's aware that he no longer works here. I mean, there's obviously the whole red headed league thing going on in the background, but that's clearly not what the... Uh, like, the main conflict in that story. I don't think it's gonna be related to the main conflict in whatever's going on here. At least not as a 1-1 one -one or approximation or even a match kind of thing. Since... Pfft. You know, in no small part because, like I've already mentioned, they already did that in the final case of part 1. Years ago was when the professor was being held at the prison, so it wasn't. I feel like I'm having a bit of a hard time keeping all the timeline stuff straight. So, like the three Japanese people came to study together 16 years ago, but the murders thing was 10 years ago. So, wonder what happened like during the entire meantime. Like exactly how that part of the timeline worked. In actual fact, he didn't really leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. He was dismissed. By you. It was after a particular walk. What's your word for it in here? A walk to the gallows. 
job that she afforded to prepare the gallows tree and oversee an execution, you see, so... Mitchell did something unthinkable in that last walk he was manning. I'm sorry, but I cannot reveal that information. Could it be related to the fact that, uh, you know, Scythe's death report on the professor and that whole coming out of the grave situation happened uh, was, I guess, assumed to be inaccurate. I can tell you that it's very rare for a chief warder to be relieved of his post. Hmm. Yeah, we don't know why she doesn't know about it. And apparently neither does he, so... <laughs> Last execution that Mr. Vigil was responsible for overseeing. Could it have been... The Professor? Well... Better just... Be as forward as possible about this. I'm not at liberty to answer that. Well, that's a yes, I would say. That room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to do with one another. I need fresh corpses for forensic research, they can. And yet apparently they claimed in the previous case that the process of getting a fresh corpse to a... like a research hospital is not as simple as you might think. That's why there's have like the bizarre black market for it. The advancement of medical science isn't always particularly palatable. I worked in the laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard. In the basement of St. Centers. Or is that like the attached laboratory? Have we been here? Have we been there? Is that where we went in the previous case to like look for our scythe? We got Tobi and I have to to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms for more fresh material. Well, <laughs> over a pot of tea and a plate of calf biscuits, of course. That was a good fella. Well, I mean, he's still around. We could ostensibly have these two people meet. I'm afraid I'll never understand you, Japanese, so, because of Genshi Nasugi. How could we possibly have, you know, different individual behaviors from different people, even if they're all from the same country? It's almost as if that's not enough to, uh, you know, put a blanket description on somebody. Vigil's dismissal notice, 10 years old. Okay. So he's not gonna talk about the specific execution that he was involved in, but he's still gonna give us this. It's not the original mind, well... Should probably take a look at it right away. Chief Warder Daily Vigil is relieved of his post with immediate effect for having violated Clause 132 of Her Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. All rights to redundancy pay and other financial benefits are fully revoked. Eating and abetting to the escape from this prison of convict. How many asterisks is that? One, two, three. Ten asterisks just prior to his execution. Yeah, it's probably not actually going to be significant, but that's. Um, I'm pretty sure that Genshin doesn't have ten letters in it. What about uh, Asugi? That also doesn't have ten letters. That's literally five letters, so. I mean, I assume that's not going to be significant. Details of this escaper's team still being investigated, full cooperation with inquiries will be expected. Indications are the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration. It's believed that the convict engaged in some form of negotiation with prison staff in order to secure assistance. All disclosure of information regarding these negotiations will be demanded. 
And yet, I guess he either doesn't know more about that or he doesn't want to tell us right now. Do me a favor and never come back here. That case is closed. Well, I guess we can necessarily guarantee that given that we uh, you know, are looking for that, guys. Just for that guy, period. Will he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? Well, he did imply that he didn't want to go out for any reason. His bright red hair, so... And now it's blue. Now it's a different... Garish artificial shade. Maybe it's advisable to test my hair color restoration tonic before application. Well, I mean, that is technically a diametrically opposed uh, color to what he had before. Wonder if that's what he was trying to achieve. A reward or friend? Have we gathered some new information? Well, let's not discuss it at length. Except for... Whatever may be about to be brought up here. Can't Adam and Eve it. That's a very stereotypically cockney thing to say. I mean, that's got enough against some of the other stuff that they had her say in... Like, for example, final case of part one in this translation. Really, a very great matter for Miss Lestrade made a mention of my hair whatsoever. That is true, Gregson. The boss is dead. That's actually true, that came out of nowhere. Shot with a pistol. So I guess that means that she's not going to France. Yeah, that seems pretty damn sudden. But the feeling that we're not gonna get any response out of presenting anything right now, so let's let's get the details. I was really shot and he's dead. Little rented room in a building full of flats in Fresno Street. Not clear to town nor near his home. He's perhaps investigating a case then. One of the yard knows nothing about it, no nothing about no case around there. Hmm. I was gonna show he might become a proper detective, well. I mean, to be fair, I'm pretty sure that in Studying Scarlet, which was the first home story and which also introduced those two characters. Uh, the original Lestrade and Gregson, that is. I think that they said that Gregson had like a little bit of a leg up about Lestrade, even though Lestrade did become the more recurring one. When it was reported something was going on, the boys got straight down there and took care of him. Well, do we know who it was, at any rate? Is it the missing person? I can't believe it myself. It's probably gonna turn out to be the missing person, given that it's probably not gonna be anybody that anybody else that we would have known. What would it be? It was the Reaper. Wait, what? Hey, well, that souls are coming out of nowhere. The arrest advance seeks for that. I mean, it's not like Gregson was tried by or in a trial that involved Van Seeks, was it? So This also kind of raises the question of if Van Seeks is 
gonna be like a an accused a defendant in court, which seems to be implicitly where this is heading then, who would be the prosecutor in that case? Is it gonna be Kasuma? And there were actually multiple witnesses. They are the gunshots. When our log got to the scene, there was only the boss and that Reaper block in the room. I feel like that doesn't really prove anything with finality, though. And, you know, there's that whole thing where she responds to his thoughts, even though he didn't say anything. I mean, wasn't uh, Gino already calling something? Wasn't the implication that they were all gonna head to the scene at the same time? Well, we better get over there right away. I suppose, Fresno Street Room. It's like a room in the outskirts of London, would it uh, Is it also somehow gonna turn out to be a reference to uh, studying Scarlet? Because I'm pretty sure that was the same kind of setting. I'm not seeing any German words written in blood on the wall, so perhaps not. But this dust written rental room is where it happened then. And there's also a red wig in the background, I've noticed that so far. I wonder if it could be. I'm also not noticing, like, um. any hint of a carpet anywhere in the room, so. it's probably not gonna be like a second stain thing at any rate. We got over and now stuck for the window on our of town. Well, I mean, honestly, that's probably pretty good advice. Taking consultation for someone or from someone who used to be a criminal. That's how you actually beef up security. That's like a norm. You gotta get the information from the best people who have previously dedicated themselves to getting around that security that's in place. Finish investigating already, wait for me. Sholmes has only just left, okay, so he went ahead of us. I didn't, wasn't sure if I caught that before. You're a lawyer, right? You're not thinking of trying to help that Reaper block, are you? Well, I mean... Imagine that from her perspective, she's got like mind of all reasons to hate that guy at the moment. Well, we can also talk to her, I guess, but I shall take a look at this place first. Or, I guess, if we were to do one thing before anything else, it would be presenting her with the... Uh, the Armand. <laughs> so I just proved that I'm a detective. Anything but auto, well... Defender Nara Auto, if you like. 
Don't really trip off the tongue. Never mind the fact that I'm pretty sure that's another conversation that I'm pretty sure we've had a... You know, verbatim in the past. I guess nobody knows what Rex and I was doing here to begin with. It's been half a year since I got out of the click. So now I decided to give up me diving and become a detective instead. Didn't really know much about the boss till then. As it turns out, he's a bit of a legend at the yard. I mean, he, the way that he behaved seemed to be played that uh, was partially because... Uh, because of his own... Well, to mention of his name in the... I guess in this universe, Sholm stories, but apparently he managed to solve some really tricky cases just like that. Ever since then, he started going out in all sorts of investigations, but always on his own. No one else at the yard even knows what after cases he's working on are, apparently. Hmm. You know, we didn't hear about any of that until literally right now. I had a lot of respect for the Reaper too. So yeah, is it gonna be? Is it gonna turn out to at some point be established that they had like a like a Yatagarasu kind of thing, like in his return investigations? Did something else to me at all. I didn't need to worry about the Reaper because he only goes after people what are bad. And yet he wanted to take her out of the country regardless, but I guess that's not happening now. I wonder if she ever actually learned about that from anyone. Apparently it's been rented by some cove called Hugh Boone. Just out of here today, gone tomorrow name, that is, it's, I don't know. It's what we call an unidentified person, I can't tell if that's supposed to be a pun, or if that's uh, another name that's lifted from the home stories. I feel like it might be the latter. This place hasn't been lived in for a long time, if ever. Or someone just didn't like wallpaper, or wallpaper that went all the way down the wall anyway. This Hugh Boone is in fact Inspector Gregson himself, well... This was a secret offense that was completely unkempt. If you look around you'll see there's a few things that hit that as well, yeah. Because that should be our cue to actually do that, but let's talk about everything we possibly can at first. The bullet went right through him and stuck that candle tree on the wall. Did it? It's blown one of the candles apart completely. I mean, I see two candles that are missing, but also... Uh, I don't know, that weird marking on the rightmost one. Doesn't feel like it's just a normal burn mark. The unused is around the floor. It's a reaper's in it. Is it? Said so. I mean, can we ask him? There's no street runs under, runs along under that window there. There's some street sellers just outside where the gunshots. <laughs> I guess they're gonna be the witnesses, but I guess we don't get to know who that, who those people are gonna be yet. Where are we getting a grid in? Outside the yard, we'll just. We'll just want to know what you're snooping for, and you'll be off for a good animal. We can't interview them, but we can look around this scene, and I guess she's got sole authority over this scene at the moment. That's convenient for us. And let's actually look around here. There's a fireplace. Looks like uh, it's a pretty small fireplace that doesn't necessarily have much regard for the safety aspect of it. And it's thick with dust, so I guess it wasn't really being used regardless. Nope, it's 
one or the other. I'm not saying you're a moron for suggesting that alternative possibility, but... Certainly something for you to stew over. Oh, I guess we have to look at the picture. And not the lamp on that desk. Oh, who is it? Oh, it's... That's the same woman that we were just... Uh, that would be... Well, that Sean's got the gaze from. Mrs. Visual. Oh. This might somehow turn out to be a man with a twisted lip situation after all. Or at least something approximating it. Looks like some sort of notice board or something. Like a yeah, conspiracy theory board. Autopsy reports and details of prison inmates. Detective documents, even though I feel like the implication with the picture and with some of the stuff that they're mentioning here might be that the, uh, the missing water guy was the guy that was staying here. And the advertisement to the red-headed league. There's also the very conspicuous, uh, even though we haven't really examined it yet, red wig in one part of the room. But I guess we'll get to that. Right now, maybe. I don't want to look at anything else first, because it is very conspicuous. What about the candlestick thing? The top of one of them has been completely blown off. Looks, there's wax splattered on the wall behind. Is there? I mean, is it supposed to be the rightmost one? I'm not sure if I'm getting that impression. Wax on the wall looks like blood to me. I've not even seen the wax on the wall, to be honest with you. Like, maybe it's the indeterminate whitish pattern that's above and to the right of the rightmost one, but that just seems to me like it's missing bits of wallpaper, not wax, but not even sure. Top of one of the candles appear to have been blown off. I guess it must be the, you know, the tallest one that was actually blown off, though. See if we can get a better look of that in the court record. Yeah, because you get like fucking scorches all over it as well. Perhaps a bullet struck the candle here, even though. I don't know if a bullet impact after passing it through someone's body would leave that kind of scorching on a candle. But what do I know? to say about the other candles, anything to say about something that might only be visible from a different perspective, or I guess not. Seems like that was the one thing that could have been gleaned from that other candle. Let's see. And this is just a photograph soon, in, so... Nothing else to glean from any of this evidence that we haven't already seen. We can take a look at the sorry state of the windows here. That was totally blocked up with bricks. That one totally not on that the history of the uh, the window attacks behind it. So hopefully this one doesn't. We can talk to some of the people that are just hanging around here. If you're looking down, I'll show right beyond Inspector, don't worry. Well, I guess he just doesn't care. Does the guy that's standing over here have a separate hotspot readout? Yeah, I guess so. And they're all brooding about the inspector instead of having anything to say to us, so it's literally you know, too much in trance to, uh... Well, I guess this one kind of acknowledges us. Too many tears, sir. Take my word for it, sir. There's the gun, there's like a bobby thing. We can take a look at the chalk outline, I guess. Whatever they've used. I'm pretty sure that they use tape for this kind of thing, at least. Today. Rope is laid out around the body, okay, so it's rope here. 
to show exactly how it was found. Seems like if you use rope, that would be very easy to uh, disturb the shape of it, though. Probably be under Dr. Side's scalpel by now, if not for what happened last week. I mean, maybe someone else is gonna take charge of that. It appeared that the inspector was curled up in a bowl. He was in pain and he died agonizingly after getting the bullet wound. Just awake. Take a as well, take a look at things in descending order of apparent importance or. What have you. Little model policeman. Do you think it belonged to Inspector Gregson? Well, who knows. It's only about 8 centimeters tall, could have fallen out of someone's pocket, I suppose. Maybe it'll have some kind of terrible criminal significance, like a calling card. Let's take a look at the gun. Her shot here, that'll end well. Probably best to avoid handling it. Well, it's just gonna be carried around in our inventory now, or at least, uh, at least in such a capacity that we can just examine it freely, I'm pretty sure. There's also this. It's a hairpiece, isn't it? Bright red hairpiece. Supposed to find that it's right here next to where the body was found. Means we have to accept that Inspector Rickson wore wigs, even though we saw for ourselves that he didn't, and they wouldn't have looked like this anyway. I think that might be all the evidence that we can glean from here, though. Well, let's take a look at some of this stuff in the court record. Maybe that's what we have to do to, uh, like, propitiate. Uh, some kind of progression. The hell, it appears a little worse for wear. Well, that part looks like it's been fairly heavily manhandled. Maybe it can be removed. Oh shit! Or this. It appears to be some sort of key. should look like. It probably wouldn't be a key for a door, at any rate. It's a little key doing inside a figurehead of a policeman in the first place. And why is this thick shaft coming out from between his legs? But let's not dwell on that. Probably nothing else to talk about with this figurine anyway. This must have been the murder weapon. So we're supposed to show this to somebody who knows more about guns? Is there even anybody like that that we can talk to? Like, maybe the prison guy? I get the feeling that he maybe wouldn't, though. Literally, who knows about guns? How does Gina know about guns? Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Not actually meaning to the might as well take a look at the thumbnails here. <laughs> Here. Rexon, he's dead now. Unless he somehow turns out to have been even a fake death like uh, Kazuma. Anything inside? Well, you can see that it's fake. I always want to see what lies beneath. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing to say about someone. Must have to use lots of bird lime to keep it in place in your head. Well, I'm not sure what bird life is, but... Yeah, I mean, it probably would just be as simple as plopping it down in your head and... ...hope that the blowing off by the wind part doesn't happen. Not that I would know. Hmm. Hey, do you have anything to say about this gun? I 
I mean, there is evidence. It was found right here, but... I don't know if there's anything else we can do to... Oh shit, the uh... We can go to the person, I didn't even realize that. Are we actually gonna be defending this guy? Then it's not even the final case of the game, and we're gonna be like defending our rival... Prosecutor, maybe. And be finding a different prosecutor in court. Last place on Earth I'd like to be with the last person on Earth I'd like to see. Well, This is a letter from an old acquaintance, so... Is it recent? Albert Herbrain, oh. Is it related to what's happening right now at all? I guess he's not gonna share the contents of it with us at all. Well, I guess we might as well get the default conversation. Over with to start. How much you already know, well. The inspector was shot dead in a small rented room in Fresno Street, and you were found there by the police when they arrived on the scene and immediately arrested. We also don't know who the witnesses are. I don't know what happened myself, but I mean you could just tell us what he was doing there in the first place, assuming that he didn't do it. Not in the habit of shooting the people that work alongside. Before I had a chance to investigate, I was apprehended. Well, well this is pretty typical. Late game maze attorney setup where the evil or feared prosecutor is. Apparently left with nobody who wants to defend him because of uh, the reputation that he has. Anyone other than you, I should imagine. It's uh, some kind of legal obligation to give a defend defense attorney, I guess. Unless that's also a thing that doesn't exist in this universe. I mean, he is involved in this case, but not as the prosecutor, so clearly it should be safe. All the defendants have prosecuted only 19 have ever been acquitted. That doesn't really tell me what the ratio would be inherently, though. Of them, 16 subsequently died in mysterious circumstances. Oh, that's what he wanted to lead up to. The other three being uh, Gina, Sozuki, and... I guess her brain? Yeah, that would be the latest one. Nobody wants to know the true identity of this killer more than I. These things may come to a head before I have the chance to recover the truth about that. I could be thrown in jail or executed, but... Before we get to that, might as well make you pursue this, probably fruitlessly uh, pursue this point of inquiry. So he also went back to his country immediately, so I guess the only person that was acquitted in a trial that um, he was prosecutor in, that's still in this country, would be Gina.
And yeah, we assume that the Reaper doesn't follow people overseas. I was keeping well in Japan when I inquired the other day. There's a two second silence, that's all that's, uh, yeah. It's really nothing compared to some of the silences that I may be accustomed to when it comes to attempting conversation. you even after we've uh, probably been through enough at this point to establish that you're not cut from the same cloth as the man who murdered my brother. can we even go right now? Something to do with trying to figure out what happened between uh, like how Van Six would have been involved in the in this case that led him to try and figure out what Gregson was up to or something or that at least would explain why they were both in the same place. When this happened they had come to the same place. Okay, I'm not crazy, I was hearing... <laughs> I don't think that the microphone would have picked any of that up, but I'm pretty sure that I was hearing like a very, very loud, like... ...machine humming noise in the background for a while now, and... ...it just kind of suddenly died down a moment ago. And that pretty much confirms that it was in fact coming from not in here. There's a very faint hum in this room where I am right now, coming from the computer, but... Uh, that was like something else entirely, but not too sure what we're supposed to be doing now, honestly. There's this, shall we visit somewhere else first? Shall we try to interrogate the fucking Chief Justice again? Maybe, since she gives that information where it's like, you know, I don't think we've been here for a while, maybe there's something new for us to uh, discover here. Someone else is here. Is it gonna be Kazuma? This mysterious return. Oh yeah, I suppose it is. <laughs> I actually call that. And he's no longer wearing that mask of his. Or the cloak. No doubt you've heard the sickening news about the Reaver's latest devilry. <laughs> and apparently he won't hesitate to just press with this litigation. Tomorrow the symposium finally begins. We can show the world our justice system's swift and equitable processes, even though... I don't know if that's suggesting that any of that will come up in the presumably uh, upcoming trial, but... Maybe. You can only imagine. This is a fine opportunity for introductions. Reintroductions, perhaps? Well, here's Kazuma. In his very much not dead state. He will present at tomorrow's findings, leading the prosecution. Okay, so I also managed to call that, it seems. 
I literally be a prosecutor, even though he's the one who started this. Uh, like the guy who wanted to study defense. And would have been in our position. Prosecutor who is also working against his uh, former mentor, I guess. Is he gonna be there if we try to, yeah, <laughs> get him in the background? Alright, well. I mean, was her presumption correct? Did he come here to. Try and find out more about his father's, like, um, history. In that whole situation, he does the voice, really. Go to London, that's where your destiny awaits. So he was the one who completely disappeared from the... from Hong Kong and somehow managed to stow away into London. And apparently did so while escaping everyone's notice. Yeah, our paths will cross again real soon as we probably just grow in wise too. People all over the Empire will be watching closely to see how it unfolds. Now the Reaper himself must stand in the dock. Hmm. You know, I feel like that really only happened a couple of times in the main line is attorney series though, the main prosecutor becoming like the defendant in the final case or something akin to that. I mean this isn't the final case anyway, but Tomorrow's trial will mark the start of a new chapter in our country's great judicial history, huh? Oh. Why would that be? Because we're gonna be showing off even more forensic stuff, and Kazuma will be the prosecutor. Even though he worked as a defense lawyer before, I mean... It's not the first time I will say this much, it's not the first time that a uh, character known for being a defense lawyer became a prosecutor, temporarily at least. Imagine what it will mean for the prosecution to know the strategy is commonly employed by the defense, well... That was stayed in combination. It's a personal request. This is just being granted. Even though it seems that it that should be something that should be taken for granted. Being wise to give the public a reason to perceive it as the judiciary closing ranks. So it's also symbolic in that sense. And he's already assuming that the uh, yeah that we're gonna be the defense, which I guess I mean that's gonna have to be how it happens. And there was a gun. Do you know anything about guns? Can we show you the gun? The detective will Yeah. Technically, someone who ended up passing the box, so... So, prosecutors also carry guns. I don't know how true that would be in a real-world uh, situation, but... 
Jackson had his gun on his person. And Lord Van Six claims it's not currently in his possession, so he's saying that the gun that was at the scene was not his. He lost it. Which yeah, would be pretty inconvenient at that precise moment. Seemed like a very easy way to just paint everything on him. There's much you could learn from the public gallery. We've already assumed that he's Hold it. not gonna be the one to defend here, even though. Would there be anybody else who would. I don't think there would be anybody else who would be. Uh... Like chalked up to be uh, more a readier choice for the defense anyway, because of the whole no one wants to have anything to do with the Reaper situation. But Always were intent on studying British law in order to change our own justice system. That's your dream and Mr. Narahoto didn't want them to die with you. I actually have a favor to ask. I'd like you to be there to see how it ends. Well, regardless of how it... Oh, right in front of me as a defense counsel, never mind, I was gonna say. But he started saying that. It imply that he didn't necessarily have to be the defense counsel, but... I guess it's this guy's insistence and, and not the defendant's actual insistence that's gonna drive this decision. In this scenario. In this case. He recognizes your talent. It's hard to see behind the... They didn't actually write out the city yet there, but facade. Have a look at this. Oh boy. Oh, dang. That Van Seeks and Gregson and the older Van Seeks who was murdered. Must have been taken some time ago by the look of it, even though... I feel like Gregson, out of all these people, is the one who looks... the most similar to, well, how he did when he died. I guess he's not technically around anymore. I mean, surely you can figure out who the third person is by now. Well, this parade in Grayson's office, which I guess must mean that we've never actually been to Grayson's office. That seems about right. I'd find that some straight talking makes him take a different view. Oh, okay, so I guess that's gotta be the thing that we brought him with to... ...make him do the paperwork to make us his defense. And we have no choice but to do this because he's being so insistent, so... Alright. Let's get right to it. I guess we've gotten all the information that we could have possibly gotten about the situation so far. I guess he had to have... I was gonna say he had to have said that out loud. And I guess he did say that out loud, but... I was gonna say he had to have said that out loud for Susan to have reacted to that statement, how she did, but that could also have been the meme where she can just kind of read his mind. So, not necessarily, but... Oh well. Wait, what was that? The case notes brought to me in secret, I was reading them to pass the time. Okay, so it's not even the same document that he was reading. So have you found a lawyer? Surely the offers have come pouring in so far. Prosecutor for your trial has been decided. Even he doesn't even know who it is, well yeah, it's gonna be his former Apprentice. That made the color drain from his face, not like you could really tell. We could have a conversation, or I could just, like, immediately bring the... I guess we gotta do this first. Bring out the evidence. 
Elder brother was who was the director of prosecutions at the time was murdered, and the killer was a professor, yeah. It was the final murder that he committed apparently. And not only the not only an Asian man but also Asagi's father. I guess there's also that to take into consideration. And son is to crucify me in some kangaroo court, well. I doubt he knew of the young man's true identity from the outset. But why why did he do that specifically though? That is a valid question. What Lord Strongheart is saying, assign this trial to somebody like that. And he apparently continued to just say that he hates all Japanese because of what this one guy did. Brother Clint was hunting down a mass murderer. That looks like the murderer got to him first. Assisting the investigation was a certain visiting student dispatched from Scotland Yard. Wait, what? Is that what he said? Assigned to the investigation as his partner, yeah, was a certain visiting student. He was apparently studying policing, I think they did mention that. Well, that guy turned out to be the murderer, so it seemed, unless he was framed or something. I feel like that's not entirely a possibility, an impossibility at this point. That something to that effect happened. It seemed all minded and chivalrous in the extreme to me, but that was so the true nature of the man. So I lost everything when it happened. Esteemed father of the people I believed in, and any semblance of right prevailing over wrong. So I'm just gonna make it happen, like a sledgehammer, in this position, except that I can't do that anymore, at least not at this moment. Wouldn't ordinarily have been allowed, but a beleaguerly ascribed prosecutor until he consented. I'm in charge of the Professor Case Inquiry, Lord Mailed Strongheart, so he was just like a regular prosecutor at that point. Agreed to relinquish the trial to me and act as my advisor instead. Time passed that then earlier this year, who should arrive in London but you? Or those dang Japanese people? I mean, specifically because of his acquaintance, I would imagine that would be that he would be expected to like have you stop on that at least a little bit. Kazumazuki, I am the bane of this. What was that though? The Reaper who sent his father to the gallows, but I feel like he also would have taken that, uh, you know, the whole complexity of that situation into consideration. And there's obviously gonna be more to this whole thing than what he's brought up. Jackson's transfer to the Paris Police Prefecture had finally been arranged for the coming months, but now it'll never happen, and I guess Gina will also never go there. It's the first time I've ever encountered it. Hmm. I guess Interpol wasn't quite uh, so much of a prevalent idea in this age as it would have been later. I can't imagine what kind of magic Gregson must have worked to put that arrangement in place. And yeah, we heard this rumor about him. Can we maybe get a little bit more, uh, a few more details on that? It was ten years ago that he first made a name for himself by uncovering a decisive piece of evidence that exposed the professor's identity. If it wasn't for Gregson's singular approach to the case, the discovery would never have been made. When my brother's life was taken, the inspector pushed for a full autopsy. It was considered the desecration of the body at the time and rarely performed. My brother was of course a noble, that made the idea of it even more unthinkable. But something Gregson had dug up in his investigations made him determined it was necessary.
I'm not gonna hear any more details about that at this time, though, I guess. Have confidence in anyone. Well, don't get your hopes up. I doubt he thought of me only as Yomina's Reaper, just like the rest of London. Well, you don't know that. I mean, there's also the fact that uh, we can literally show you evidence to try and contradict that right now. But yes, we're gonna exhaust these regular conversation topics before we get to that. That's not mine. He still maintains that. Yep, I lost my gun. That's a pretty silly thing to do, eh? Must have started somewhere, I suppose. Or left it somewhere, perhaps. It is the kind of thing that you just kind of forget about, as you might imagine. I mean, this is apparently the one thing that he has been known to misplace fancy, so I don't know if that would even be an equivalent. I guess there's only one thing left to do right now, and that would be to show the armament. So you know this by now. I mean, how many times I tried to bring it up to you in conversation? Is that some veiled praise? Yeah. Wouldn't that have been something? But also, take a look at this. or just making these association notes in the moment, I guess. He was prominently displayed in Gregson's office. So that serves as proof that, yeah, clearly there's more to it than that. That aseptic relationship that you were talking about just a moment ago. Brothers in arms, jovially discussing the future of justice and other such lofty subject matter. Suppose that past must be dead now, though. That's the first time he's ever used my actual name. Well, Absolute integrity as a lawyer. Other Clinton Genshin Asagi, well, I mean, only one of those other two people was actually Japanese. So. As he must also never have met the other uh, two Japanese exchange people who came to the country at that time.
Yes, that, is, that actually is gonna turn out to be, at least in this situation, the final thing that we see before we transition over to the trial scene. Following the old Bailey against my old friend Kazuma. So yeah, there isn't really anything else that we could learn from the investigation or continuing investigation at this point, I guess. So we must have the trial now, at least the beginning part of it. Result of the menacing appearance of the defendant. Yeah. Wonder if he ever came by this. I'm pretty sure that he would have come by this lobby before. Probably at the end of the last case. I understand that no jury has been selected. Hmm. I mean, I guess. Yeah. I guess we assume that. The Professor Cage wouldn't have had a, at least a regular jury of randomly selected people. It probably wouldn't make sense to select random people for the jury in this case, in light of the gravity of the situation. You made none of my hair? Oh yeah, well, I guess it's a little bit harder to see from this angle, but... I guess there is also the fact that I guess it's it looks normal again. And not gaudy. And to one man is a little hair problem, is to another a day of drinking dubious potion after dubious potion. Compared to my paltry engagement, set a few trivial cases. Reaper suburbic presence is a far greater deterrent to the black roots of crime in our capital. Even though it's not like, uh, you know, Van Six had uh, his own equivalent character in home stories or anything like that, but... Whilst I may not agree with their methods, there's at least one point in which I would readily commend you. Try for a good lawyer. And this lawyer there's a very great mind, my own. And here come these two people together. I didn't even realize that Gina has her own arm at this point, but... Oh, that's new. Morning band with a very, uh... Very shiny police badge part of it, though. Symposium has been postponed, so I can just try for some free time, okay. It didn't even jump out to me at first that he probably would have been at that place before being here. Why'd you take him on? Well, this Reaper bloke. Everyone says it was him. What? Kill the boss. But well, we have good reason to believe that that was not the case. Just like. Don't know who the real killer in this case was yet, but.
And just in time. I don't think we would have any kind of concrete suspect for who the actual murderer would be at this point. Maybe that will change, like even before the first trial session ends here, but... Who even knows? And also, who even knows how certain things are gonna work, even though apparently we're not gonna have a jury? I don't know if the implication was that uh, we're not gonna have a jury, or that the nature of the jury is gonna be different. Talking about the public gallery a while ago. Some of the conversations before the uh, investigation part closed, but looks like that was very much a moot point in light of how this is being conducted. I mean, maybe uh, maybe that some of the characters we're talking. It looks like at least Mikotoba would be able to observe the trial, and maybe a few other people would. It looks like there are a few people here, even though it looked a lot more empty than it, uh, you know, usually does. There's a close trial with no members of the public present, but I mean there is some some kind of audiences behind us we can see. The burden of all arbitration and adjudication falls on my shoulders. As you will see, there is no jury. Alright, so might I ask who is currently occupying the gallery and why it happily thought it proper to bring like such ostentatious hats and such. Members of the judiciary here to witness proceedings and ensure an equitable trial. There is, of course, another unprecedented aspect of these proceedings on which I must elaborate. The counsels for the prosecution and the defense are both aliens of Great Britain, yeah. And yet they've been given full authorization. took place on 1st November at just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Into the setting. Victims were about discovered there in an old single room rental property. Oh, so it was like literally a one room house. And, I mean, only now that he's died, people are going to talk about his involvement in the professor case. I suppose. Several witnesses on the street outside. I guess we're gonna figure out who those witnesses are. Here are a plan of the room. And sure enough, that's pretty much how it looked to us. It's pretty good that he was shot from front at point blank range and died instantly. There were scorch marks around the entry wound. And yeah, that's another detail that's used in the in the main series, he's a turn of games, too, so... Powder hard enough to leave scorch marks is only detected a few inches beyond the end of the, of the barrel. It only happens when the target is at point-blank range. In case you didn't already know that from playing more of these games. Or just in general, you know. And yes, the owner of the firearm has not been conclusively established. Feels like the, uh, like if fucking, you know, Van Six himself was doing the persecution, he wouldn't necessarily have been so uh, tactful with that. 
Well, we punched with the victim and struck the wall behind him and apparently was traveling in an upward angle based on how that, uh, that candle ended up. It raises a few questions about how the position of everything would have been, uh, everything and everyone involved would have been at that time. is rented to a Mr. Hugh Boone, but there's precious little furniture inside. And they haven't even been able to figure out if Hugh Boone is a real person or not at this point. Maybe well. When a policeman was informed of the gunshot from the witnesses, he found only the deceased inspector and the accused standing alongside holding the revolver, just like, you know, case four of his attorney one. It keeps coming back to that. the prosecution would like to call it for its first witness. The accused himself. Don't know exactly what we expect to get out of that, but... what he was doing there to begin with. But I guess he's probably a bit more pressure to do that in this context. Getting Gregson and my inquiries had led me to that address. Doesn't say any more than that. I feel like we we really gotta press that first. But I mean, I feel like we gotta press everything regardless, like usual. I first entered the room that day was dark inside, and I saw no one. A moment later, I heard the gun shot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Just as I picked up the firearm to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. I heard a shot being fired in a room with no living occupants. And moments later, a corpse somehow appeared before your eyes. That part definitely seems weird. You are my mute apprentice, yet it turns out that you have quite a way with words. Katie Gregson, I guess. Can you tell me more about that? Would be the first line of inquiry here. Surely it must be directly related, though, of course. It's just kind of deflect immediately. I'd identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in a case I was investigating. Regardless, we thought he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. I was privy to his movements in advance. I went to his office in the yard and consulted his diary. The address in Fresno Street was noted in the 5 p.m. entry. But he's being very, very forward about this right now. And he refused to tell the court why.
Well, I mean, other than Ajagi, no one seems to be pressing the matter further. Maybe we should take notes. And he doesn't know what the deal is with that house. There's no artificial light in the room at that time. Part of the room that the body was found in was very dark, even though it was right under a candelabra. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I couldn't say for certain. I mean, we saw a small oil lamp on the desk when we showed up. actually reached the desk because he heard the gunshot and saw the revolver on the floor, so there's, I guess, the, at least the possibility that uh, there were one or several persons in the room at the same time as him when he came in, but he didn't notice them. Shot originated somewhere outside the room. No, I guess not because it didn't have, didn't leave a trace of its entry point. Without a doubt, the but that's not gonna be his argument here. He just says that it sounded like it came from inside the room. Source. The barrel of the revolver that I picked up was cold and there was no smell of spent powder. But then where on earth is the gun that was fired, indeed? Window. How was that window, though? I mean, it seemed like it would have gone that high up, at least at its lowest point. A match seller, a newsmonger, and a peddler. Is peddler really that uh, come out of a spelling for that word? All given statements saying they heard the gunshots, and maybe we're gonna be hearing from them after this. I well, thought of danger, they run inside to see what had happened. Burst through the door with some force. Almost gave me a heart attack in the process, so... First man to come in and immediately, immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. Policeman heard a commotion, but so apparently the witnesses didn't specifically call for the policeman at that time. I was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. A man's scream drew my attention in that direction. It's only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me, so only then that he noticed it, though. Is what we're assuming, but maybe there's more to it than that. There's some kind of trick that was used to hide the body at first or something. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there until that point, and then suddenly there it was. I heard what's the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first, nothing more.
Don't care if it's a victim's body because the room was dark. And he's gonna bring up, yeah, exactly that. You know, I feel like that there's, you know, the fact that it says doesn't actually prove the f that it would have been burning at that moment. You can see it hasn't been blown up by a powerful impact. Yeah. I mean, maybe that still doesn't prove anything. That's a thing. The other two candles, which are clearly of a different length, so maybe someone just lit the other two candles. Maybe you don't need the full shine of the. Uh, like all the candles when he burns something, like there's a light in the hallway right outside the place where I am right now where that has like four potable bulbs and I like to take some out because I don't like when it burns at full shine. <laughs> I just don't like full intensity lights in general. This is not proof of anything, is what I'm saying. I was never to have visited the scene of the crime, but he can somehow prove that that was not true. Covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper chargings. And not the picture. They included a number of reports from various historical cases, the oldest of which was from 10 years ago. There's a common thread linking all of the documents in that board. Is it literal thread? They all relate the cases prosecuted in court by Park Van Six. So maybe it was somebody else who was like trying to do the actual Reaper impersonation. Cases in which the defendants were acquitted. Interestingly, not all those defendants are alive today. Because they were all sent to the graves of the Reapers, so we not assume that um, we assume that neither Sotoki nor her brain were in that uh, that stack of documents. Yeah. He's saying that these things are proof of lies, but they're all completely circumstantial, they're not conclusive. I mean, that's pretty much the same kind of tactics that we would use on the defense side for uh, quite a long time, but... I don't know, I feel like... Maybe precisely for that reason, they would be easy to contradict. them known facts. Well, I guess maybe now we get to look at the board at least. That's one good thing that comes from this this whole sequence, let's see. And now we get to talk to the other witnesses. I didn't get anything new out of the way. Well, we got the floor plan, but I think we can probably find anything new from that. We also got the autopsy report, which I kind of missed. He died at 45. Time of death. Doesn't say the time of death, though. Maria... Maria Gori was the coroner this time. Shown in the chest at close range from the front, resulting in instant death. Scorch marks at the point of entry, the bullet exited the body from behind. Caliber of the gun used much as that of standard issue firearms for members of the judiciary, and yet we assume, based on what... Uh, what Van Six has said right now that the actual murder weapon was not found, and the gun that was found actually at the scene was neither Van Six's own gun nor the one that was the real murder weapon. How about this? <laughs> Look at the backside of it. Oh, hey, there's an actual 
bloodied uh, Hagrid here. Perhaps we'll use that information to show something. Details of a whole raft of cases dating back years and here. Papers from 30 years ago as Browning would age. I heard of the advertisement that Mr. Sholmes had picked out. I'm not really sure how that would relate to a Reaper case, though. I guess that's probably going to be the only piece of information that we can acquire from investigating the front side of this thing, though. Just a reminder that that one piece of information exists on it. It's a time to figure out who the witnesses are. Street tellers who heard the gunshot and went running into the room. I wonder if any of them are going to be like the red-headed people that we saw at the very start of the case here, when we went to the, the rooms in Baker Street, at least. Guess that's a no, but we have seen one of these people before. One of them used to be a cab driver. God. What's up with your lips? Doesn't seem like that's natural or healthy. Is that what we like? Live where we want to live? I give them all a vacant stare as they walk down Fresno and spit a few words in the verse for them. Calls me gossip, so jointly little titbits to passers-by, you know. Well, right up your gin, ladies. It's expenses the price and not a penny less. Let's see what it is, well. It sounds like an order. Okay. Seems like everyone's gotta learn it, sir, uh, even though we're the ones to pay. A couple on Slate Street have just had twins. <laughs> Paid six pence for that. It's gossip, and it wants to spread, but that's that bit's up to you and your mouth, of course. Casual Bruce or whatever it is that's poking out from under your collar. Oh yeah, that I hadn't even noticed that myself, honestly. The lip is too distracting, but is that some kind of minor case of goiter going on? And what about you? So everyone calls me. Funny in it. Tell these lovely little fireworks to all the local school kids. Hmm. Six pens a pop. They all sell for that price, whatever they've got. Yeah, that seems like it would have gone well. It's being held in your hand. Second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers, so... Especially when I tell them that if they get 100, they could blow up the school. I join a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you could blow up the whole card room. Well, pay the woman to blow up the card room, even though you're not gonna be. Uh, you're only gonna be getting a hundredth of the professed force that you would need for that. Fina special, only six hundred pence. Well, I mean that is. Uh, it does follow the multiplicative factor. They're quite weak, though, based on what she just uh, demonstrated there. I'm a thinker, me. Think all sorts of thoughts. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think, I think. Because I stand around the street watching the world go on about me. They call me the Observator. Everyone calls you Sandwich and you know it. So they're all nicknames, even though this guy was called Beppo when he showed up in, like, 
case three part one. Or part one, case three, I guess you want to go in this ending, uh order of complexity. Probably my shirt is a problem half, as they say. Give advice I do and think what it means. Don't actually sign anything up to think of it, except hot actual hero or whatever that says. Always directly adjacent to the crime scene. Seeing light and shadow playing with our eyes, is any of it real? How can mirrors be real, etc, etc, insert more jokes of that, uh, that ilk in here. I can only imagine what the testimony is gonna look like. We saw the whole thing from start to finish, we did. Everything from the moment they went in the building. Less than a minute after the Reaper had gone inside of the Allure the Big Bang. Seems to me that quick to talk is quick to walk, because I couldn't wait to go and see what happened. Went into the room and there he was. The Reaper got in hand standing over the dead body. Scared half to death me, so I ran off to find a copper. Even though it, they kind of made it sound earlier that the cops just kind of came on their own after one of them ran out of the room. After screaming or something. <laughs> Instead of actually being summoned. What did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Grayson, and the accused. And we're going to maintain that. Which is one of several flats in the building. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't really establish that before, if that the room was the whole building or what. All those flats in Fresno Suites are unoccupied. Small, damp, dirty, and expensive boot. The room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. Well, I mean, it's probably better than living on the streets anyway. We know the leaseholder's names. Name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Which... Not gonna be mentioned in any greater detail still. But the question of that guy's identity would be. Actually, speaking of Hugh Boone, let me check something real quick that I probably should have checked. Uh, probably should have checked a while ago. Uh, yes, like this. Hmm. Oops, not like this. Okay. I didn't even. Uh, didn't even occur to me to check on this earlier, but it looks like I was pretty much running the money with my prediction of um, this having an equivalent with Man with a Twisted Lip, since the name of the name of or alias of the uh, main guy in that story is Hugh Boone. So there you go. <laughs> that was in fact the source of that name. So anything that would be immediately contradictory, but what's the gist of these things? We saw the whole thing from start to finish we did. Everything from the moment they went in the building. The likes of us to know the names of the high and mighty, well, tell you one thing, it was the old people that went in last, that's for sure and certain. I must have got inside a good 15 minutes before we heard that gunshot. Bright red fell like that. Wait, who was that? First fell, I must have got inside 15 minutes before we heard the gunshot, and apparently. He had some bright red hair. That had to have been somebody else. His hair would wear red, but it's redder than my flaming fireworks, even. Speaking of that, we probably need to look at those. If 
have a red mob still burn on the inside of my eyelid. It is. We found a fake red wig, but we also didn't look at the fireworks yet. Is this really 100? This doesn't look like 100. This is. We literally count them right now. 4, 4, it's 16 fireworks. And apparently we can't examine any of them, except for this fuse. I was wondering what 600 pence worth of fireworks would sound like. Oh, I kills off like a gunshot, there we go. Didn't even occur to me to think about that, but it does make a lot of sense now that I think about that. A lot of firecracker sounds going off could sound like gunshots. Actually, that's gonna be important here. Shame the mine was a redhead, even though neither of neither the victim or the defendant in this case have that. And he had a big trunk with him as well. Hmm. I'd break it to you, but the witnesses are correct. It's just kind of argue that he had. Uh, wait, what? Oh, well, he didn't conveniently didn't mention this at all, but I guess. You must assume that Gregson was wearing the red wig at that time, unless it was dropped on him. And what became of the trunk that the red headed victim was supposedly carrying? The trunk was found at the scene, so it just disappeared. I mean, they said that they were looking at everything from the beginning, so that seems like a contradiction, I would say. It was less than a minute after the Reaper had got inside that we all heard a big bang. Hold it! At which presumably you mean the gunshot, well, yeah. How would I know what a gunshot looks like? Well, that's a bit of a funny question when you consider the... Uh, you know, that sound. A bit like this, but a tad louder, you might say. Like in the extra special version of that firework that she keeps showing off. Almost as soon after the... Well, that's the second I entered the building. It's what the French call a fait accompli. Whatever that means. And reapers around, people are, people are going in the ground. It's to me that quick to talk is quick to walk. Does that mean that he was the first one to try and get inside? I'm a bit hampered, see, all the signs are that I can't move very well. That sandwich board around your neck and that big sign in your hand, well... It's possible you and I have met before, well... Employed as an omnibus driver just under a year ago. Just under a year ago. Maybe his trembling has intensified. Well, actual hero sandwich, I guess, is what that sign is supposed to mean. Turn down King Andrew Street and Black Widow wears arms is just there. He says he saw the Reaper with a gun after the gunshot sound. Kicked the door open like a professional, I did. And he yelled. Even though Van Sieg said that he only heard a scream. 
There were candles burning on the wall, he says. There was a filler collapse on the floor. And yeah, that does contradict what Van Six said. What's going on? Van Six didn't see any walls or any lights on the wall. Coward. Still, my grandma gave the Reaper a cold heart to turn myself for the brand new this guy as a contradiction for that. Excuse me. Empty in the head, I am. Just two slices with no middle. Insert Gordon Ramsay joke here. Really. Try to dress ourselves up as something else, but at the end of the day, we're all just street sellers. When he saw the Reaper, he fell clean over his what? Clean over on his backside. He screamed, he did. Screamed and scrambled over all fours. That's all I wanted to say. I was able to bring that up. I was dead slippery, that's why. I had my hand in a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? So, would that be his handprint that was left on the uh, back of the board? It was a pool of blood. Hmm. Yeah, that would pretty much serve as a contradiction for the position of things in the room, as we knew them, though. I mean, when I was sprawled on the floor, I still kept giving that river a cold heart stare. Out of my hand, so I quickly wiped it off on the floor. But I think we could probably immediately come up with a contradiction for that. It's kind of to death me, so I ran off to find a copper. Hmm. Let me see if I try to present the the handprint on the board at this time. If that will be like good enough. I haven't looked at the photographic print uh, in detail yet either, but I mean... <laughs> Not like we can really discern anything more from it at this point. Objection. Yep, seems like that is in fact good enough. So you wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room, or so you claim. Police found us a handprint on the floor during their investigations. Objection. I mean, that is precisely the problem, I would say. There's no bloody handprint found on the floor. It's on the back of this notice board, yeah. very definitely testified that he wiped his hand on the floor, and yet... Does it mean that the board was on the floor at that time? And it was moved later. Between when the actual crime happened and then when the police showed up. In for it to have been left on the corner of the room like it was. Yeah, it was also in the opposite corner of the room, that's precisely why it's suspicious. It's basically right next to the corpse, not on the other side of the room. I mean, 
It is contradictory to how stuff was found. And yet the evidence was created in the state that it was, so... This discrepancy and the location of the handprint is explained by the board moving and another handprint or false testimony. I think I just want to say the middle one. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised that we're not being made to choose between the board moving and the body moving. But it does seem to be the most obvious one in light of that. That missing alternative bit. As the court can see, it's upside down. It tells us that it had definitely fallen or... Must have been lying on the floor, yeah. Which means that after the incident, it must have been moved. Yeah, it does make sense, actually. Because that would be the only explanation for how that handprint would have ended up in that state. of the notice board at the time of the incident must have been not in that corner but closer to the body I guess. Since the, I see I guess the blood stain would imply that the body itself couldn't have been moved. I mean that's honestly probably a good question given that uh, here's the problem right. They said that they saw the body immediately when they came in or at least that guy did and the body though apparently would have Required for him to be um I'm gonna have to save here. Not only to for him to have opened the door, but also to have gone past the place where the door would have been. Once it was open so he could actually catch sight of the body, and even then he wouldn't have been right next to the body, I don't think. So I'm thinking, I mean, he had his right hand, so that means it would have been in his right side. So I'm thinking it had to have been like on this general area, I'm not sure exactly where. If it was next to the body, it probably would have been like around here. Let's see. I'm afraid I don't quite see your logic. To be closer to the door. Couldn't have been that far from the body though because of the bloodstain thing. If, well, I don't know. Let's try this to start, like right here. Or maybe here about ish. Oh, what am I doing? I don't want to save again. That's right here, goodness. Nope, I'm afraid I must have also popped the wrong thing there. Again. the door itself? No. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, actually. Could it have been, like, in this little area, even though I feel like that makes even less sense? But I'm... This is the only possible location, immediately occasion to the doorway, but how could the, um... How could the guy's right hand have... I have several questions, but let me see. In light of that, I'll send us back in time. I feel like the spatial imagination they expect me to use for this question is uh, a little too out there. A little beyond my own personal capabilities, perhaps. I've always been bad at spatial imagination, to be honest with you. Military just to the doorway. Oh, so that means that they would have. the door opening would have knocked it over? I guess that makes sense. To some degree. He said that when he entered the room it was dark and he couldn't see the body, so I guess if the board itself was in the way. We would have blocked the light and the body. Q 
accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him, and yeah, that would also account for that in a way, you might say. So the board was being used like a screen to, like, hide off that corner of the room, maybe. Could also maybe account for how the real killer could have gotten out of the room unnoticed, but... Get feeling we'll get to that. Talking about me, and no mistake. Well, it's me that kicked the door open. And yeah, sure enough. I walked in there. Knocking it over and making the victim's body visible, yeah. Must have righted the board and moved it into the position where the police, myself, and my colleagues saw it when investigating the room. Could it have been this guy? Could it have been somebody else entirely? that they're in the sport. Just wipe my hand on it, that's all. And look at me, I haven't got a clue about it. I was doing business with some second years at the time. Well, just a bystander just the sign of the crossroads of life. It was that Reaper, I bet. Hmm. Gotta face that scream sport. Well, the detective still died when we heard the gunshot, or maybe he didn't, though. Maybe you didn't hear that. Taken by the crime they witnessed and with only the light of a few candles and an oil lamp by which to see. I expect these witnesses to be able to give a more precise account of what happened. Hmm. As this testimony shows, even if the notice board was moved by somebody following the incident, it makes no difference, or does it? Maybe the notice board is the key to all this. Get all the information as usual. The handprint was definitely on the board. It's still plain as day for all to see a smashing print of my right hand. Perhaps you were the one who hit it by moving the board, except. It's immediately gonna deny that. It looked like a powerful and well nurtured man, well. Some second years at the time after the guy had run the door open. Which conveniently was also kind of left and mentioned before. There's a prior school just around the corner, see, and there you another Holmes name drop. Cheeky so little so and so has a bit of plan to blow their school to keep them calm. Well, and you're gonna facilitate that. So I've been telling on them, letting their teachers know what they're up to, really. Wouldn't want anyone to get hurt, so I let the schools know the kids are playing with dodgy toys. And the teachers take all the fireworks of them. Which means that they keep buying more. Oh. I mean, that seems like a pretty respectable racket if it works, if, like, the main source of supply there is not going to be cut off. Sometimes the teachers give me a little bonus to thank me for letting them know. 
can life shield an explosive so. Time bear face last is kind of my thing, really. I'm ever so good at it. Boy. Apparently, this guy also has something to say about that. Excuse me. See, there was a great liar and that great liar's head without butting an eye. Tell him bare face lies is kind of my thing. I'm ever so good at it. Those words of hers be a lie too, or the tooth. In which case, she's not a liar. Have you ever read uh, the tale, or not the tale of anything, but the Three Imposters by Arthur Macken? Seems, uh, you know, this three witness setup seems like a very uh, bizarrely adequate parallel to that story, which is also, which also happens to be one of my favorite novels ever. So. It's a hellish paradox, that one. Mr. Me, you're suggesting Miss Venus has been lying, are you? Keep on like that. And I'll wrap your whole body in firecrackers and set them off. That'll give you something to tremble about. Well, start with the disturbing mind behind that sweet and innocent face. Very creative torture suggestions. So she has lied in her testimony. It means I'll be burning in hellfire for the rest of my days, so be it. Well, blubber about here, headed for the room where the gunshots seemed to come from. There was someone else who crept up the stairs behind him, too. That rotten liar over there. Oh, she was actually on the scene of the crime. Should have was good at telling Burface lies, did I? Well. Seems like it's a quick admission, if nothing else. Plus, perhaps I do clearly remember climbing the stairs to the room, yeah. Also, does that mean I, you know, I hadn't quite caught that so far, literally, until this moment, but I guess the room that the murder took place isn't actually on the ground floor. For the time being, you will immediately re amend your testimony to reflect the truth. I'll see what else she has to say now. Maybe I did sneak along behind Gossip and have a little peek into the room where it all happened. Well, did that change anything? Everything I'd say with a big pinch of salt. Oh. Hmm. You know, it makes me think about something. If I go to the people part of the thing. Okay, now we don't know what the radius are. At least not for these witnesses. We somehow know that this guy is 51 though, and this guy, the missing guy, is 40, and she's 36. I don't think they ever mentioned that. I'd love to see if there was anything I could sell. Well, I give the place a one sober, but it was nothing to write home about. Hmm. Didn't move the notice board by any chance, did you? I feel like... Yeah. Should be a loose changes all I had. Oh, 
phone right then. Thought there might be something worth having underneath it. So I blasted the flipping thing. Or flipped the blasted thing. So she moved the board, but it sounds like she wouldn't have moved it from like the basic position that it was in. The daft barn pot. I found this whole pocket watch under the notes board, I suppose. And of course that wasn't brought up at all until now and hmm. Apparently Gina knew about this or was expecting this. That watch there was a person to inspector Grayson from the yard for a big case he solved ten years ago. Hmm. So she pulled a little bit of the old uh Theradia robbing the dead action. I was used to wind it up every evening without fail when he was waiting for his grub to come at the pub. I it off him once and blimey was he upset. He gave me a right earful. That might be also a bit of a warm snod with the scene at the start of the sign of the four where... Uh, Orms deduces stuff about Watson's brother based on his watch. He hadn't missed a day in the last ten years polishing it and winding it. Not all that though. Took it to Jabez's that night. Okay, so Jabez Wilson is also gonna get name dropped, even though the character that actually looked like Jabez Wilson was also in case for whatever. I'll have to probably just work all that out when whenever this case is over. The dealer wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't give me a penny for it. Said it wasn't working. Knocked about. Worthless, he called it. Hmm. Well, the main point at this moment being that the watch was removed from the scene. That appears to be broken. Maybe it's gonna be the convenient thing where it broke at the exact time where that the murder happened. Yeah, but unlikely it started when the inspector was shot. Wasn't enough to uh, deflect the bullet, though. Not like the notebook in Hot Fuzz. It appears to have stopped at the hour of five. When the gunshot was heard, yeah. Maybe there'd be a bit more to it than that. Be sure the moving notice board has been sold at least, and I guess we're gonna go right back to the uh, testimony then. <laughs> examination. Yep, the glass face sure is cracked. I mean, it would need a new glass face, but maybe the clockwork was also damaged. And the part on top is also like the thing that you would turn to. To wind it up is also missing. Must have been a little knob or something on that for certain time. Seeing as we know the inspector took such good care of this watch, probably broke when the incident occurred, didn't it? Hmm. Which could mean that there's still a small part of the watch still at the scene, maybe. Don't think we're gonna be the ones to find it if that's the case, then. Do anything on the back? Guess not. Just this broken off part, the base, which I guess is where you would... Is this where you would wind it, or would it be the other one? And a little keyhole here. Oh, hey. I think we know that this much is up with. It's the, uh, the thing that came out of the little policeman figure. <laughs> so that did belong to Rexon, we must assume. A very bit like a key that's about the right size to fit in this hole, yeah. So maybe if we re examine the policeman key. Uh, we can get the full information on what that's supposed to be. <laughs> That there was like another hotspot down here, but I guess not. That's it for, I wonder. Oh, 
It looks like we gotta get new description. And we'll look at it again now. And sure enough, let's try it at once. If it still works, if you want it, I'll just admit that it kept going even after it was smashed. The watch isn't actually broken after all. Okay, so that is significant. Having wound up, it started ticking again. So if the prosecution says that uh, the time that was on it when it was smashed is the definitive proof of proof of the time of death, we can contradict that with this. So that's probably what we're gonna have to end up going for. The question is, at which point of this uh, series of statements can we actually pursue that argument? We did see... go to see what had appeared. Members of the side family, so if I'd spotted it, I might have tried to trip it up. Out of a sense of rivalry, I admit. I don't know anything about anything. Just a bystander, me. Just the sound of the crossroads of life. I'm gonna do some bizarre fake Socratic logic there, but. Gonna lead to a circular argument. But Thomas Morris is the one fix that he likes. Don't see how that makes any sense. But it's just been like a bizarre wordplay attempt at least. That's what I'm getting out of it. Where took my eyes off that man on the floor or off the reaper? Not for a second. Never know what a fiend like that might do if you look away, do you? Confirm categorically whether or not he was the one who moved the notice board. Hmm. Reaper did nothing of the sort, I can swear to that. Wouldn't have missed it. Couldn't have missed it if he had heaved the thing up right again and dragged it into the corner. And yet, somebody must have done it. And. mean, we learned that. Uh, watch your face over there. Venus lifted that up to see if there was anything under it, but that doesn't necessarily translate to moving it to the other corner of the room. But Detective still died when we heard the gunshot. I guess this is... Yeah, this struck me as the place that was probably gonna be the point where we would be able to present the contradiction. Maybe the notice board fell over, or maybe it didn't. Maybe I fell over, or maybe I didn't. But the Reaper's fate is sealed either way because of the gunshot we all heard. Your fate sealed too. Unless, of course, we bring this up right now. So I guess we just gonna try to present the watch at that statement. See if we can get to another chapter break so I can wrap things up because it's been, been going for a while. But actually, gotta take care of this. Can't leave this unfinished. Objection. Yep, apparently, it is just a matter of doing that. Found this key to the winder of the inspector's pocket watch. And it still works, which means that it didn't. Uh, like the time that it showed. Despite being smashed up, doesn't mean that it's definitely the time of death. So, 
Oh, that watch must have been cracked before five o'clock. Is what we're gonna be pursuing now. Objection. Objection. Well, I guess maybe now we present the firecracker as proof that whatever they heard couldn't or didn't necessarily have to be the gunshot. Call with Inspector Lestrade said only moments ago. Would wander up every evening without fail. Meaning he probably been probably would have been winding it up if he had been still alive and doing part of his normal routine at about five o'clock. We can reasonably assume therefore that he wound the timepiece on the evening before he died as well. But if that's the case, you wouldn't expect the watch to have completely wound down by five o'clock the following day. I mean Depending on the time of year, you could see that 5 o'clock found or counts as part of the evening. The evening before the day of the incident, though, I guess we're arguing that the inspector was already unable to wind his watch. Assuming that he winded, up, winded it up enough every time he did that, that it would run for at least 24 hours, but that's also an assumption on our part, I would say. He was already dead. The previous evening, that had we're saying. I mean, that doesn't make any less sense than a lot of the allegations that the prosecution has made so far. <laughs> There's an omission in the coroner's report, and anyway, it's a time of death. Just a blank uh, spot left black. Put my head in a dirty great puddle of blood. So the victim's blood hadn't dried, or so we assume. Because now we're gonna argue that that wasn't necessarily his blood, or yeah, it was something Objection. else entirely. I learned it, friend, and now he's adopting that turn of phrase. Didn't necessarily have been human blood, of course. Could have been pig's blood. Have you seen blood sausage? That's very much a British thing. We've been told previously that Scotland Yard has no way to identify blood as human. Oh yeah, I guess so we have. And a chicken's blood could have been used, for example. Just some conveniently uh, sacrificable animal that might have been passing by. And yeah, I guess now is when we argue that that wasn't actually a gunshot. Yeah, sure, it was a loud bang, and <laughs> this guy still has the whip from when he was a freaking coachman. That sounds like a gunshot could have been made with. Well, we already know this. Take that. Let me make a little pop, except when you sell the super expensive version. It would seem. And so he probably was summoned to the room by like the true culprit. That's probably what's gonna have turned out to be. It's gonna turn out to have been going on. He was summoned to the room by the true culprit, and that's how he was set up with one of those fireworks. Objection. And he accused himself as testified that he saw no one else in the room at the time. I suppose I could have been contrived to be in some kind of a delay. If 
here for her fingers. Well, I mean, she's apparently couldn't quite add it without handling those. I'm gonna call the time bomb. Oh, yeah. That is something that watched his face in uh, the previous case that Trevor nearly used. A device that allows you to blow up whatever you like whenever you like. And later on, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Don't worry about it, uh, hey, Trevor. Okay. Let's think about adventure game streams, huh? I mean, I suppose a lot of these games are gonna be, uh, I gotta have quite a strong focus on narrative stuff. What I mean, what are we doing here? I'm trying to figure out if um, we found someone dead in a room, and we're trying to figure out if a gunshot was faked with a firecracker. And I think we just established that it probably was. And we're trying to figure out how that could have been set up without the person who did that being in the room at the time that it went off. Time device. The device I was able to produce the sound of a gunshot long after the culprit had left. What proof do you have to suggest in any way that a time device was employed to create the gunshot sound? That's a good question, honestly. Could have been the candles themselves, I suppose. Probably don't see anything else in here that's a more likely explanation than the candles. Or we could attach something like a fuse to the lower part of a couple of the candles and that would have been lit when the flame got to that point or something. So I'm just gonna try that. Take that. And apparently that was right in the money. Tape of one of the candles in this candelabra room has been blown off. Oh, I guess we assume that that explosive thing was made not by the bullet, as was previously assumed, but by the firework, which I think makes more sense, because yeah, I don't think a bullet from that far away would leave that kind of scorching. Gunpowder scorch marks clearly visible on the broken candle. But nobody apparently noticed until this very moment. But as we heard earlier, it only occurs when the bullets. Well, it only occurs from a gun when it's pretty much right in front of the gun when it goes off. Point blank range. Means this scorching on a candle can't possibly be the result of a gunshot, so it had to have been this other thing. Candle and firecrackers were joined together. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Somehow attach the firecrackers at a point far away down the candle, just using the very same fuse that they come with, I guess, to use as a rope. I reckon that would create a bit of an inconsistency in why no remnants of the firecrackers themselves or the fuse would have been found at the scene, though. I feel like there would still be some kind of residue from that. That's how these three witnesses came to believe they'd heard a gunshot at 5 o'clock. Still gotta figure out who would have left the guy's body in that room to begin with, though. Plus, the victim could have died earlier than we've been led to believe. Previous day, even. Hmm. I feel like I'm also starting to develop a bit of a theory for... who the culprit might have turned out to be, but I really don't know. It's just speculation at this point. But it would include a uh, potential motivation. The person you saw entering the building wasn't the victim at all. Oh yeah, I guess that would have been the first person to come in. Could have worn if the victim was already dead by that point, the culprit could have worn that wig and then put it on the victim afterwards. 
because that would have been like the one thing that they would have fixated on to describe that person. The person that these witnesses saw entering the building 15 minutes before the incident occurred could have easily have been someone else entirely wearing the red herpes. Same person who contrived the firecracker trick. Wasn't I the one who told you that you had all the makings of a great defense lawyer? Also noted the lack of a time of death in this report, a Stark mission. But as far as I'm concerned, this whole country's justice system leaves a lot to be desired. Well, maybe it's because we sent the, uh, the top forensic person to prison in the previous case. Many of the leading members of Britain's judiciary are present to observe the trial today, so we cannot allow even the slightest doubt to be overlooked. Time of death based on the victim's top watch is just conjecture, I mean. So is the prosecution's. While the possibility exists that my learned friend may be correct, we have a duty to explore it. I mean, how are we gonna produce that information at this point? Can we just, like, redo the autopsy? What was Gregson doing and where did he go on the day before the incident? That would be something that we would probably have to look into to support our theory that we ended up presenting. He always carried out his investigative work alone. Movements were treated as confidential within Scotland Yard. Hmm. It's fairly apparent what case the man was pursuing, I guess it would have been the red headed Lee one. We present the newspaper thing now. Hmm. I feel like if my own personal theory about what happened uh, that led to Gregson getting killed. If that's true, then the way that joins to this part of the evidence, this part of the case, is really not clear at this time. Oh, so it can be the Red Wig or the newspaper article. <laughs> that's a pretty nice concession. I mean, they're both relevant to the case that's uh, being alluded to here, so... I assume that it was part of a disguise to carry out an undercover investigation. Definitely have made him stand out in the crowd, except an extra element from the Red Headed League. Is there such an extraordinary League of Gentlemen? Well, I've also just dropped a reference to another, uh, another work that alludes to this kind of late 19th century stories, but Red Headed League is currently under investigation for a grand deception. They've been targeting red-headed men across all of London and tricking them out of small sums of money. So the nature of that organization, like I've talked about before, is really different from how it was in the original story. Or even the Granada series adaptation of that story, which tied it into a greater scope thing as well. League next. That's gonna be a chapter break then, from where we're gonna leave things off for the time being. We'll have a 30 minute recess, court is adjourned. It does seem like that's where this is going, yeah. So on that note.
but I reckon that will be a good place to uh, leave it off, at least for now. It still says Trial Part 1, even though it's like Trial Part 1, Part 3 or something. Point one, point three. One hyphen three four one three. I don't know. There's so many different things you could ways you could raise that, but I guess that would be the next part of this. I don't know if this is gonna turn out to also have like um, uh, what do you call it? Like three separate days of investigation and trial. I actually just saved, so yeah. Three different parts of investigation and trial, like in the previous case, but I wouldn't be surprised at this point, but independently of that, I think we're gonna be leaving that off for when I play this last, or next, I mean. This has been the time when I played it last. Retroactively so, but... But speaking of that, let me take a quick look at the calendar, because next Monday is... 27th, and the Monday after that will already be in October, it will be October 4th, so I get the feeling that what I'm probably gonna end up doing is whenever I play this again next Monday, I'll probably pretty much devote the rest of that week to try and just play more of this game so I can try to get through the remainder of that. I don't know if four consecutive days are gonna be enough to get through uh, all that's left of that game, but I'll at least get started on that since like I'm pretty sure I've been alluding to I probably want to do a few different things in October as well and I just don't want to be that uh, don't want to leave that as one of two separate things that would be pretty much left dangling the other one being Chrono Cross, which I at this point I'm just ready to make the concession to leave that dangling since uh, it's probably gonna take even longer to get through but I'll be playing some more of that uh, later this week. Let me also bring this track back since I started playing a little bit earlier, but then... The actual... it was right before the actual game started that... well, that I just wrapped up just now. But we get to bring it back from this moment, so that's nice. This moment in which I end things off. But yeah, like I said... Probably gonna be trying to do more Chrono Cross and maybe even go back to... Outer Wilds very, very briefly. That might be like another thing that I briefly try to bring back with a bit more intensity later on just so I can actually finish that because it's been up in the air for a really long time now. And I feel like I do want to like put enough time into that game that I do actually want to see that wrapped up. And if it's not entirely clear to me... Uh, like, how much longer I would have to spend with that to accomplish that, but probably not that much longer based on what I've seen. But yeah, that's gonna be the deal for the remainder of the week. A couple of Chrono Cross thingies, and also a little bit of Outer Wilds, if I can actually manage to pull that off and not just fail to do so like I have been for a while now. And maybe a non-zero chance of a co-op stream on the weekend, but we'll see. And then next week, I guess it's gonna be a whole lot more Greatest Attorney stuff. See if I can at least get close to wrapping that up. I mean, I have less than t two whole cases to go at this point, so hopefully it won't take super long to get through the main river at least. And you know, I just kind of want to see the the conclusion before too much more time passes, so that I don't get spoiled and stuff. As I've kind of come under risk of having that happen from some channels that I'm involved in. Also, Steam wants to update, isn't that timely? What does the chilled category mean? As a weird Spanish translation, I honestly was a little bit uh, confused when I saw that some time back, but apparently it means precisely what you would expect, which is. Streams that aren't very exciting, but that's what makes them appealing, I guess. I very recently became aware that that's apparently a tag that exists under the new tag system. That, I mean, it's mostly just frivolous shit that I'm never ever gonna use or would ever want to use. But at least that one seemed like it would be a little bit fitting, so I figured why not, I mean... It also helps neatly cap off the 
I don't even know if it still has a 5 tag in it. Let me take a quick look at this. Uh, if I wanted to say, for example, um, 100 per Okay, yeah, no. You can only select up to 5 tags at any given time. So there you go. I have my 4 obligatory first playthrough tags, which. You know, I feel like first playthrough, and, or at least first playthrough itself, could have been replaced with blind playthrough, which is perfectly. Perfectly serviceable. If they hadn't just um, completely nuked that out of a bizarre, misguided sense of sanctimoniousness, but apparently they also have a blind tag that's meant for actual blind people now, so you know that exists. Oh dear. That combined with casual because I never speedrun anything. Combined with no spoilers and no backseating, and now I can have chilled as an extra thing, I guess. <laughs> Why not? I feel like that, uh, you know, all these stacks are combined, or just even by virtue of existing, aren't really gonna make any kind of a significant difference, but hey, whatever. Spanish translations are really bad, yeah. I'm not surprised. Especially in light of some of the other things that I may have just alluded to. Isn't there an alternative to Twitch? Well, I mean, there's a few things that have come and gone. Like, there's one that I tried for a while that literally doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. And I feel like that pretty much can be said for a few alternative services that have um, cropped up here and there. Pretty much, unfortunately, made that same fate, so... Unfortunately, it's pretty much... Uh, it's more or less a monopoly right now. I feel like that... Um, at least in spite of that, if they can have the decency to help me keep this space, uh, how do I even phrase this? Like, as not something that's expected to be. Yeah, I really don't know how to phrase this, but basically, if I can keep things going like the way I want. I will at least be able to say it could be worse, but oh well, I guess also take note of that statement and try to figure out how much longer I'm going to be able to keep saying that for, but well, this has been a bit of a turn from what I was saying just a couple of minutes ago, hasn't it, but I mean, it's never a bad thing to state the truth, I would say. But on that note, I feel like it's high time that I went off and... Just kind of said, yeah, later for the time being, so let me see. Why don't I go ahead and cap things off here by trying something a little bit different from what we've been doing in the recent past. Let me just click on this and click on this and... Confirm that right now somebody, one of the people who is streaming is... If I can spell this properly on the first go, which I think I did. Yeah, Salt Zerk, who is... Uh, you know, also a nice chilled, uh, I guess, dude, you could say. Wink, wink. Who we've had a... Uh, we've gonna say hi to a few times. Who likes a lot of Castlevania stuff, which is, I'm pretty sure, how I first became aware of his channel, and who also just seems to do a good chunk of retro stuff in general, and is currently doing a Zelda link to the past randomizer, so why not go say hi? Oh dear, in light of all that, I've already said pretty much what I'm probably going to be doing for the near future, which is more going across out of wilds this week, and then just more Greatest Attorney uh, until I beat it for pretty much true foreseeable future after that, which shouldn't take long. And then will be Spooky October Month, which I will have to figure out a more detailed plan for in the near future, but yeah. But uh, that having been said, I will say, you'll take it easy, I thank everybody for coming like always. Thanks for chatting, always great whenever people chat, and I will be seeing you all later.